Ross be to you in the name of Rooney Roos. <laughs> now, Runatics, welcome one another as I shall welcome you. Oh my goodness. Uh, wow, I can't believe I made it exactly on time. Whew. I was really, I was rushing. How incredible is it that I made it at exactly, that I came onto the screen and started talking to you at exactly eight o'clock. <laughs> at exactly, at exactly eight o'clock. Incredible. I can't believe it. <laughs> thank, thank you for the dono. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's not showing up on my alerts yet. Oh no, are my alerts messed up? Okay, hello everyone. <laughs> let me let me back up a bit. I don't need to be this close. I don't need to be quite this close. You guys gotta see my my cute little reindeer ears. <laughs> hello. I know, isn't it? Isn't it just incredible that I was right on time and I really thought that I was going to be late. It's good to know that, you know, on, on our second ever Rooney Roos Day, that I was perfectly, perfectly on time. Yeah, I, I love you guys way too much. I love you way too much to be late. <laughs> yes, uh, a very, if, if I am anything, it is uh, punk punctual, punctual. <laughs> I say that like it's a joke. I'm actually a very punctual person. I, I usually am, but whew, I had I had a I had a drive you guys there was a drive today <laughs> For those of you who do not know uh, I was away visiting family for the holidays and it was about a nine-hour drive away except there was so much freaking traffic that instead of being a nine hour drive, it actually, I was wrong when I tweeted earlier, I lied. It was actually a um, 12 hour and 20 minute drive. <laughs> 12 hours, 20 minutes. Uh, that is too long, my friends, too long. Because I, I was telling you guys the other day that my limit is like 10. After 10 hours, I'm done driving. And I was going to split the drive with my mom, but because there was so much traffic and they routed us this different way and there's actually like a, like a pretty big bridge like partway through the drive and my mom's really afraid of bridges so she can't drive over the bridge and so it just it perfectly worked out that because there ended up being traffic and the first leg ended up taking longer and I had to keep driving because there was a bridge that as I got over the bridge it then immediately went dark outside <laughs> and my mom also cannot drive in the dark <laughs> so I just drove uh, I just drove the whole time uh, and, uh, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't love traffic. I hate it. Every time I get stuck in traffic, I get hit with the distinct feeling that Thanos was right. Thanos was- Thanos was right. <laughs> uh, I- I had to still stream, though. I've really been looking forward to this. And it's only- it's only the second ever Rooney Roos Day, so I was not about to cancel it. I thought for a, for a minute there I might have to delay it a little bit further because traffic was just getting worse and worse because it was you know like when you're on the road and it's like oh you know GPS says you're gonna get there you know at this time and then all of a sudden it's like oh it's saying 15 minutes later and then it's saying 30 minutes later and then it's 45 minutes later and then it's a whole hour later and you're just standing there looking at it like So I was really afraid. I was really afraid for a, a little while there that I wasn't gonna, like I wasn't gonna make eight o'clock at all. I'm really glad I also made it eight o'clock. That was a premonition on my part because usually I stream at seven. Usually I stream at seven, but I just, I had a feeling, even though the plan was to get here way earlier, I thought, you know what? I'll just play it safe. I'll push it back by an hour, you know? And, and we'll just see, we'll see what happens. And uh, I'm really glad that I did that because otherwise I really would have been late. <laughs> I, d I ran, I ran in. I ran in, uh, I, I cleaned up some cat puke. <laughs> One of my cats puked like right in the front door. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't have time for this. <laughs> I'm wiping cat puke up off the floor. I forgot that we t I took the trash out and so there wasn't a, a trash liner in the can. And so I pick up the, the, the 
cat puke and then I go to throw it away and there's there's no trash can liner. So then I'm like, no, I don't have time for this. I'm like whipping out a trash can liner. <laughs> speed, speed, speed. And I wanted to dress up way cuter for this stream. I really wanted to, but I, I didn't have much time. So I, th I, th I threw this little blanket on and these ears on. I hope this, this is enough festive decoration. <laughs> I was, okay, with the GPS, I did shave off some time because once I really started getting tired, I went crazy. I was speeding. I was definitely speeding. <laughs> and I was very surprised that my mom didn't say anything because usually she does. Like on the way there, you know, she very politely looks over at the speedometer and she goes, Rooney, you know, if you get caught doing 100 on this road right now, it's going to be a pretty hefty fine. I was like, okay, mom, I see what you're saying. I'll slow down. <laughs> but on the way back, she didn't say anything. And then I mentioned it to her because I shaved off. I shaved off some time. I really did shave off some time by just being an absolute speed demon. Uh, lead foot, lead foot. And I said something to my mom and she was like, I noticed, but I wasn't going to say anything because I was scared of you. <laughs> She got scared of me. <laughs> she wasn't scared of me on the way up. She was scared of me on the way back. <laughs> and uh, I didn't get caught. Exactly. See? I didn't get caught, so it was fine. <laughs> uh, It was, you know, usually I feel like... I wouldn't have even worried about it, but there was kind of a lot of traffic. So I was, you know, speeding and weaving through traffic. It's fine, cause I'm a very good driver. As I told you guys before, I know you don't believe me, but I'm a really good driver. <laughs> it was a good Christmas though. I did have, I hope everybody else had a good Christmas. Uh, now I don't know, my alerts, I got a dono alert and it's not showing up in my activity feed. So I'm gonna see if I can pull it up. I can see if I, uh, cause I, the activity feed in Streamlabs is, well not Streamlabs, OBS is not showing it, but maybe if I pull up the website, it might show it. Let me see if I can get this uh, fixed. <laughs> but yes, I did have a very good, <sighs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I had a very good holiday. <laughs> oh, I'm glad it looks like you guys got had a good holiday too. It was okay. It was an okay Christmas. Um, I did get some gifts. I got some pretty cool gifts actually. I got um, uh, one of my sets of grandparents gave me a sun lamp, which I have very much been wanting because it's been dark really early recently in the winter and I miss the sunshine. I can't... I can't stand not having the sunshine. Um, so I'm really hoping that this sun lamp will help. I got it fixed. Okay, I got it fixed. I got it pulled up. So thank you, King of Toasters. Hi, Rooney. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, here's a small gift from me. I hope you don't mind that it's a little late. I don't mind at all. Thank you for the Christmas present. Merry Christmas. Yes, my vitamin D happy lamp. It's my happy lamp. So uh, I didn't have time to plug it in before this stream, but we're gonna we're gonna see if this helps keep me uh, nurtured in, in the sunlight. <laughs> Even when it's dark outside. Shut up, I'm not a normie. That's just science. That's science. You need the sun, okay? Is it normie to be, to be a creature of, of biology? <laughs> Does that make me a normie? Um, I also got, oh, this is really cool. Um, my granny with the chickens got me a, a coin, a silver dollar from 1976. It's a little dirty, but I'm going to clean it up and get a dis display case for it. I'm very, very excited. I, I was like, it's really cool. And it, it belonged to my great grandfather. So I think, I don't know. I think that it's kind of special. I don't care what you guys say. It's not normie. I don't care. I'm ignoring you. I'm ignoring you. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Boo, 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 boo. Tomato, 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 tomato. Now it's my turn. I'm throwing tomatoes at you. <laughs> I'm throwing tomatoes at you. 
Yeah, isn't that cool about the coin? I think it's super cool. I forgot to change the... I was rushing, so I forgot to change the... Um... Bleh. <laughs> I forgot to change the chat latency, so it's on normal latency, so I'll see the chat a little bit late. I'm sorry, guys. Usually, usually I change it, but listen, I was Russian. I was Russian. <laughs> oh, I see. I missed I missed um, other tips, too. I'm so sorry. Uh, let me read those. Uh, thank you, Magnum. Gator, 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 gator. <laughs> I love alligators! Uh, we didn't really get to talk about it, but I know I mentioned it during my uh, Christmas karaoke stream. Alligators and crocodiles are my favorite animals. I think they're so freaking cool. Evolution don't even need to touch those babies. They're so perfect, evolution don't even need to touch them. Uh, and I think they're really cool. <laughs> Did you know that uh, for mating they blow bubbles? One of their mating rituals is blowing bubbles. How stinking cute is that? And also they eat berries. They'll climb trees and eat berries. Anyways, gators and crocodiles are awesome. They're really freaking cool and I love them. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> thank you for the tip, Silver. Hope you had a ruinous Christmas, Rooney, and that you didn't have too much trouble getting back home. Can't wait to hear, uh, can't wait to end the year with our favorite dorky evil lady. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I forgot. Holy crap. Okay, hold on. I gotta make a tweet. I gotta make a tweet that I'm live. And then I also gotta put in this tweet. I'm gonna make it right now. <laughs> I also gotta put in this tweet that I have an announcement. I have an announcement for you guys. Something special that I'm going to announce at the end of stream. So, <laughs> so get excited. I wish it was Flat Friday. It's not Flat Friday. <laughs> I wish it was. I love that account. But yes, get excited, because I have a very special announcement to make. You'll never guess what it is. I, I bet, I bet you cannot, <laughs> you cannot even guess what it is. I don't mean to brag, but bubble, bubble, bubble. <laughs> wow, you guys are so clueless. You can't even, you can't even, you can't even make a guess. I don't see a single guess in the chat right now. That's how clueless you are. You'll, Cause you'll never ever guess what this announcement is. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm getting distracted. I actually need to make this post. Hold on. What day is it? It's Rooney, it's Rooney Bruce Day. <laughs> okay, uh, hold on. I gotta get the link to this live stream. <laughs> this is so messy. <laughs> I'm usually so organized. I'm like on top of it. Today, not so much. <laughs> Gosh, wow, I can't believe how clueless you guys are. You know, I said I didn't think any of you would guess it, but I thought actually like one or two of you would guess it. And everybody in the chat is just like absolutely clueless. Like you guys can't even come up with a single guess. Like you can't come up with a single guess right now. That's crazy. Well, I... I <laughs> I'm not reading that one out loud, but it did make me laugh. If you guys can figure out which comment made me laugh, good for you. I'm not gonna read it out loud, but it did make me laugh. <laughs> what was I saying? What the heck was I saying? I was in the middle of a thought and it thought got knocked right out of my head. Completely right out of my head. Okay, live now, plus a special, special announcement. Link below, ah, okay. Posting, posting it right now. Yay, now we're caught up. Now we're not behind at all. That's a lie, because I have another donation to read. <laughs> uh, hello, maybe one way you can disprove the normie allegations. Can you hold a girly conversation or does it always devolve into either IMAS or how buggy is the best? I don't know what the right answer is. Wait, I, am I supposed to say that I can't hold a normal conversation or that I can? The answer is which, whichever one doesn't make me a normie. I feel like the fact that I don't know which is the right answer might make me a normie in and of itself. Uh, a little late, but thanks for 10K. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, Rooney Rousse better be recognized as a, a US of official holiday. <laughs> I think that it should be. And it's a special holiday because it's literally every Tuesday. 
that would make it the best holiday because you're going to get the most out of it. It'll be the most popular holiday because people celebrate it once a week. I'll talk, I'll talk to the president. <laughs> I'll talk to the president. We're gonna make this happen. I'm not, I'm not, ugh. I'm never beating the normie allegations. <laughs> Wait, I have to tell you guys something really funny that happened on our drive. So my mom, my mom on the way up, she, she got spooked while she was driving because this car came in. I didn't see it because my eyes were closed. I was trying to sleep. But I guess this car did a little crazy thing and it spooked my mom. And in my opinion, she screamed. She says that she gasped, but I think that she screamed. It was like, it maybe started as a gasp, but it ended as a scream, absolutely. It was like, <gasps> like it, it ended as a scream. Actually, I think it was louder than that. It, 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 the, there, there was diaphragm engagement, okay? Diaphragm engagement. And it just made me laugh. It made me laugh because her, her reaction to, to shock is very different than mine. Because I, I, I don't scream at that kind of thing. I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> My mom should play a horror game because she would scream like crazy. But okay, so she argues with me. She's like, no, a, a shriek maybe? I would settle on a shriek. I would settle on shriek. So she, she makes this noise, I laugh at her, I make fun of her. She does it multiple times, multiple times, okay? And she denies that she screams, she denies it. She says that all that she does is gasp a little bit, right? Well then, today, on the way back, <laughs> she's, she's talking to me. And she's talking about a dog. We'll get to that. I have news about a dog. Um, she's talking about a dog. And as I'm as I, I'm driving and a car cuts in, into my lane and it didn't use its turn signal. Now I could tell that it was coming over. It didn't really scare me at all. Like I saw what it was doing. Even though it didn't use its turn signal, I could tell it was coming. Like I said, I'm a very good driver. So I was zero, like my alarm level was zero percent, zero percent. But my mom is mid sentence. <laughs> And that car cuts over and she says, dog, <laughs> dog, I can't even do it. I can't even replicate it. And then we both laughed until we cried because at that point she couldn't beat the allegations. She couldn't beat the screaming allegations because she did. She totally screamed. She had to admit it at that point that that was a scream. Now she says it was only a scream because she was already mid word. I would, I would like to disagree. <laughs> I would like to formally disagree. Duh! <laughs> I wish we had a dash cam. That's what I said. I wish we had a dash cam because then it would have recorded it. <laughs> Thank, thank you for the donos. Uh, in a very weird twist of fate, I managed to get a rune whiskey glass that I can break in tonight. Happy second Rooney Ruse Day. Yay, yes, uh, put some nice old whiskey in there. Yeah, take a few shots of whiskey, I'll allow it. Take, take two, take three, take four, go crazy. Drink the whole bottle. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty cool, a rune whiskey glass. I want one. Um. Maybe you can watch that Lumi clip, least girly VTuber collab, and try and comment participate. And how you do shows how normie you are. Okay, I'll look into this. I'll look into this. Nor the normie test. Wait, so is it basically like if you can hold a regular conversation with a, with like somebody who's not into nerdy stuff that makes you a normie? Is that what this is? Because personally, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> there are a lot of situations where you may need to converse with somebody who doesn't like any nerdy things. Like with your family or people or people that you work with or people that you might be friends with that aren't nerdy, right? <laughs> that doesn't make you normie. <laughs> you shouldn't push your alcohol addiction on others. You're right, uh, objectively I should not do that, but I don't care about doing the right things, so I'm gonna do it anyways. 
I'm evil. <laughs> but I was saying, I really wish I had a dash cam because if I had a dash cam, we could have caught the audio of my mom <laughs> making that noise. It would have been caught on audio. <laughs> Having normie friends means you're normie. No. You guys are telling me you don't have a single friend that's just like not into nerdy stuff. Like you don't have like that one friend who's just like married with two kids and likes football. You don't you don't have that one shut up. There's no way you don't. There's no way. I refuse to believe this. At least one? Y'all are lying. I respect that. I respect your lies. You have the right to lie. But I have the right to call you out on it, you liars. Dirty liars. <laughs> Minus football, I do have that exact friend. <laughs> I'm only normie compared to everyone else in Facebook. Well, I mean, that that I can definitely see because, like, I think to the general public, I, like, I would not be considered normal. <laughs> I think to the general public. <laughs> This is why I have a wee room. This is why I have a little, a secret little room with all of my secret little nerdy things tucked away behind a shut door <laughs> so that I can pretend to be normal. <laughs> Should I need it? Should I need it? <laughs> yes, you are the liars. Yes, get it right. You're the liars. Uh, the clown knows. I can put it on. Should I put it on? Ta -da! <laughs> Ta -da! Ta -da! No, we'll put it away. I'll get flustered if I keep that on. I'll get flustered. I'm already tired. I'm already delirious. We we can't add we can't add buggy discourse on top of this. I'll go crazy. I'll go mad. <laughs> I'm hiding my power level. It's true. They can't know. I don't want to scare them away. <laughs> Yes, I did have a nice Christmas. I did. I got to see um, my family, which was really nice. Uh, in particular, I got to spend a lot of time with my niece and nephew. Y'all. My niece and nephew are so stinking cute. I can't even stand it. I was, I was playing with my niece. And we were playing dolls. And... <laughs> She, we're just dressing the dolls up, which first of all I thought was really cute because when I was a kid That's how I played with Barbie dolls like I didn't actually role play with dolls Like I didn't make them play house or go and do things I just dress them up So I would just say this doll is going to a ball and then I would get her all dressed up And then I would say okay, she looks great And then I'd say okay now She's gonna go to the roller skating rink and I would undress her and I would dress her up in a roller skating rink outfit And that's how I played with dolls and I said exactly how my niece plays with dolls too so my niece and I were playing with dolls and she's getting her doll dressed up and she puts on this brand new pair of jean shorts <laughs> this brand new pair of jean shorts that she had gotten for her doll and she's she's looking at it uh, really weirdly kind of pensive and I'm like I wonder I wonder what's wrong like what why, why is she looking at it like that and then she she holds it out to me <laughs> And she goes, these are hoochie mama shorts. <laughs> I said, girl, who taught you that? Who taught you that? Not the hoochie mama shorts. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I mean, they were short. They were very short. They were like, I mean, think like, uh, think of like Ember shorts. You know how Ember shorts are super short? That's what they look like. So, I mean, they were short. Not that I'm saying Ember is a hoochie mama. My niece is. <laughs> my, niece, my niece is saying Ember is a hoochie mama. <laughs> but I'm not. I didn't say that. <laughs> but it really made me laugh. I thought it was so cute. And my nephew made me laugh really hard, too. Oh my gosh, so we were over at my granny with the chickens and uh, my granny was talking to my nephew and she was like, you know, when Santa Claus flies over our house, you know, your papa's gonna shoot him down with a shotgun, right? And 
she's just joking just to like get a rile out of him and <laughs> my nephew takes it really seriously and he thinks about it hmm 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 and then he goes <laughs> well can you come can you let him come to my house first <laughs> A boy after my own heart. He has he has his priorities straight, okay? He has his priorities straight. <laughs> he said, if you're gonna shoot Santa Claus, at least let him come to my house first. <laughs> Honestly, I was very impressed by his ability to, to put all of those thoughts together. Cause he's like four years old. He's a he's smart. I think he's smart. He's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, the little man was thinking. He was thinking. He also he also um got me sick. He was running a fever. You know how kids are. He was running a fever and he was snotting and coughing and it was like, "Hmm, you probably want to stay away from him right now because he's going to get you sick." No. No. I did not stay away from that little gremlin. I toted him around like a hot water bottle, okay? He was so warm and he was so sweet. And now I'm sick. <laughs> My throat hurts. <laughs> and I've been having post-nasal drip. And I'm pretty sure I ran a fever yesterday. But I think it went away. Actually, I don't know. I might be running a fever right now. It's fine. <laughs> it's worth it. It's totally fine. <laughs> Hydrogen bomb versus coughing child. No kidding. <laughs> Appar apparently, uh, it's just been going through because apparently my my niece had it like last week. Wait, why is it a good thing that I'm getting sick? Why is that good? No, <laughs> it's not good. I'm gonna get a lot of vitamin C. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get a good night's sleep because I gotta work tomorrow. I've got important things to do at the demon army tomorrow, so. <laughs> Not get rused. <laughs> oh my gosh, wait. There's another really funny thing that happened with my niece. <laughs> so I gave her cheese grits. Apparently, Girly does not like cheese in her grits. I did not know this. Okay. Who doesn't like cheese in their grits? Do you guys like cheese in your grits? I feel like everybody likes cheese in their grits. I get maybe having a preference. Because to be honest, I prefer my grits without cheese. But I don't dislike cheese in my grits. That's very weird. That's very weird to me. But she's a little kid, so little kids have bad taste sometimes. So she looks at the grits <laughs> and she's like, are there cheese in my grits? <laughs> and I said, no, that's butter. What you're seeing is butter. That's just butter. And you know what? She ate them. She ate them and she said they were yummy, so... What about that? <laughs> what about that? Wait, you guys don't like grits? <gasps> you don't eat them? Oh, you don't even know what grits are? Where are you from? You, you, some of you guys don't know what grits are. Whoa! Let me see if I can pull up, pull up a picture. You really don't know what a grit is? Grits are good, man. That's like a classic breakfast food. They're so, have y'all, y'all have never had shrimp and grits? Come on, get out of here. <gasps> You've never had shrimp and grits? Oh, I guess I didn't think about that. I guess it is an American food. Oh my gosh, wait, I'm gonna show you guys this picture and you guys are gonna wish. <laughs> You're gonna wish that you had some grits in, in, your, in your mouth right now. Hash browns, you know, I actually don't like hash browns, believe it or not. They're, I don't know, they're a little, I don't know. I, hash browns aren't for me. I say that, but I will eat McDonald's hash browns. <laughs> I, it is hard to trust people who don't, okay, here's the thing. If you, if you just don't know the wonders of grits, I still trust you. I just feel bad for you, right? But if you just don't like grits, that's suspect. That is suspect to me. <laughs> it's heresy. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna pull in a picture so you guys can see. Sorry, it took me a second. Uh, but yeah, I, I, oof. Grits are nice because you can eat them in a lot of different ways. Like I said, you can put cheese in them, but you can also just put like butter and pepper. You can also spice them up, you know? Um, like you can even put like kind of Cajun spices in it. You can put your shrimp in it. So freaking good. 
A good hash brown is peak. I don't know. I, I can't sit here and say that it's bad. I guess it's not bad. It's just not for me. It's just not for me. Okay, let's see. Here's a grits. Oh, with those chives on there, get out. That looks so yummy to me. The way that I would destroy. If this bowl of shrimp and grits was in front of me right now, I would destroy. Destroy it. So freaking yummy. If you've never had grits, I do re I do recommend trying them, but, but try them somewhere nice. Like don't just get instant grits or something. I remember when I was in school, oh my gosh. When I was in school, <laughs> They used to give us grits uh, for breakfast and in the cafeteria and the grits were so bad. They would serve them in these little styrofoam bowls and you could literally take your fork and stab them into your grits and then you could pull out the grits and it would be bowl shaped. It would just be like this bowl shaped <laughs> blob of grits. They were so gross. Maple grits. I know I know a lot of people who put maple syrup in their grits. Personally, I do not, but I don't like maple. Maple tastes like wood to me. So I don't eat maple syrup at all. I don't like maple flavored anything. I don't like honey either. The, both of those like taste very much like Oh, lost tracking. Hold on. Uh, both of those taste very much like um wood to me. It tastes like licking a tree. I don't want to lick a tree. Gross. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into maple syrup. Okay, if it, if it looked and tasted like watery porridge, it was not good. You gotta try better grits. You gotta get better grits than that. <laughs> you got to. Sweet grits? Ah, I don't know. I'm, I'm more of a savory. Well, you guys already know this. I'm a savory person. I like savory grits. I like savory cornbread. I like savory crepes. Uh, I'm more of a savory person. And when I did eat meat, I did not like sweet meat. I don't, I don't really eat meat anymore, so it's not like relevant, but you know how people will make like honey, like honey glazed ham, or they'll put syrup in their sausage links? That's disgusting. Absolutely not. Not for me. I don't want it. I guess maybe I haven't had real maple syrup, but I'm a little bit nervous because that was also the same case with uh, but, uh, honey. And so people were like, oh, you've never had real honey though. You'll definitely like real honey. Like maybe you don't like that sugary stuff from the store, but you'll definitely like real honey. And then I tried real honey and that was even worse. It was everything that I hated about store honey, like maximized in my mouth is absolutely disgusting. Plus it was like a paste. It was a paste. Mm -mm. My Southern accent is gonna come out. I'm so sorry. I spent the weekend with my family. <clears throat> I spent the weekend with my family, so the accent is going to come out. It'll go away. It'll go away in a day or two, maybe. <laughs> don't throw tomatoes at me. I don't like honey. It's gross. It's disgusting. Honey real or not, it's sugar. I feel bad because I like bees. I'm not trying to cancel bees. I, I, I appreciate bees. I appreciate their honey for what it does or whatever. I'm glad that other people like honey so they have an incentive to take care of the bees. That's great. I think bees are cute. But honey is not for me. It is not for me. <laughs> no, don't rationalize. Savory supremacy. I do agree. Savory supremacy. Well, you know when else, if I drink, if I drink too much, my accent comes out then too. So there's no hiding it. <laughs> it must stay. No, it'll go away. I see it probably wouldn't. It's because I had a bunch of speech therapy when I was little. Because I had a lot of speech therapy and my speech therapist was from uh, the North. She was Northern. She was a Yankee. So I didn't get like when I was learning how to talk, I didn't learn how to talk in the Southern accent. But then, of course, I lived there for a very long time, so it rubbed off. But that's why it kind of comes and goes, I think. So when I'm not when I'm not around my family, it kind of goes away. <laughs> but then when I visit my family, it, it'll sneak it'll sneak back up on me. <laughs> Though there's other signs because I can't stop saying y'all, y'all y'all is always there, <laughs> y'all. I can't say you all. That sounds really weird. You all, you all, you all. Use, usins, 
Usins. <laughs> a wicked southern a wicked southern belle. Well, I'll be little old me. Little old me wicked. I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> Oh, uh, when see if you start asking me to say words, it's gonna get weird because then I'm gonna overthink it. Window, window, bench. Who says you all? Do people not say you all? Is that fake? Have I been lied to? I thought people up north said you all, and then people in the south said y'all. Am I wrong? <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh, did, <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, line, 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 line. <laughs> you like the fake Southern Belle accent? <laughs> Don't encourage me with accents because I really like doing them, and I'm only good at like two. <laughs> If you encourage me too much, I'll start doing accents. And I'm not kidding you when I say I'm only good at like two accents. One of which is, is my natural accent. <laughs> and then the other one is the Southern Belle accent. And all of the other ones are really bad. You don't, you don't want to start encouraging me. <laughs> Smack my hand. Make me stop. <laughs> Wait, no. Go back to the Rooney Bell. <laughs> oh, Rooney Bell is actually really cute. I don't think I could do a Spanish accent. I don't think I could. I, well, I've never tried. I can't do that. You and they say you ones and yous. Yous guys. Oh, there you go. Yous guys. Yous guys. Yous guys over there. You yous 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 guys over there. <laughs> Is that an accent? Am I doing anything? <laughs> Am I doing anything with that? Have you tried a good mead? Even if you don't like honey, uh, mead, aka honey wine, is fantastic. Uh, you have to treat it like wine as well and enjoy the open bottle with a certain amount of time. I have actually never tried mead. I just kind of assumed that I would not like it. I just assumed that I would not like it. Southern Bell ASMR, but maybe I'll give it a chance. Uh, ASMR, I've been meaning to tell you guys, I do have a 3DO binaural uh, microphone. So I do have the capability of doing some ASMR. I feel a little hesitant to do it because I don't want it. I don't want to have to always do it. Does that make sense? I think I would get really, really bored if I did it all the time. So if I do it, it might be a members only thing or I might only do like videos. I might not do live streams. Does that make sense? I might only do posted videos. Uh, rather than live streams because I think if I if I ended up live streaming a lot I get bored <laughs> But I but I do like ASMR stuff I'm, I'm very inexperienced with triggers as far as you know, like the different sounds and thing and like uh, equipment But I've done I have some ASMR experience just with my voice So I do think like some role play ones I could do I could totally do a Southern Bell <laughs> ASMR It'd be fun to write the script too as you guys know I like writing so I think it could be really fun to write. It's not, it's not members only eventually in the amorphous future that has not been yet determined because nothing uh, of the sort has been announced. Um, thank you. <laughs> I don't like honey. I'm sorry. It's gross. I don't like it. Well, that's the other thing is I know ASMR isn't for everybody, so I don't really want to bog down my stream feeds with it, if that makes sense. I kind of thought that if I just make um, videos or members only, then they just exist kind of as their separate thing, so the people who like to enjoy it can enjoy it. But it won't, like, interrupt the flow of my regular streams for those people who, like, aren't that into it. That's, that was another reasoning that I thought. Because I, I know it can be kind of divisive. Like, some people find it kind of grating and they don't find it comforting, and then some people find it extraordinarily comforting and like it, so. Kissy kissy sounds. <laughs> kissy kissy sounds. I do those all the time. <laughs> I do those all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I was, wait, this just made me, seeing the word watch along, um, it just reminded me that, okay, this Saturday, 
this Saturday, my mom and I are doing our Lord of the Rings watch through. So we're going to be starting with the Hobbit movies, watching the extended, uh, the extended versions, extended editions all the way through, and then the extended editions of the Lord of the Rings all the way through. And I'm very, very excited. And while we were on, um, while we were on the drive to my family, we planned out our meal plan because we're gonna do the whole, um, we're gonna do the whole Hobbit meals, right? I think it's it's seven, right? So we're having breakfast, second breakfast, eleven C's, luncheon, afternoon tea, dinner, and supper. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> uh, I'm very, very excited. So we planned out our meal plan. We're gonna make this broccoli and potato soup. I think I'm gonna make, oh, my, my granny gave me this pie recipe that I really want to try. It's a pecan chocolate fudge thing. I don't know. If, if my granny makes it, my granny's one of those people, if she touches something, it's the most delicious thing you've ever eaten. She says it's really good. She gave me the recipe, so I'm gonna try and make it. And as long as I don't mess it up, as long as I follow her recipe, it will be good because everything that woman makes is absolutely delicious. Thank you for the donos. Nyaho! <laughs> hope you loved the Forbidden Inspired fan art. Oh, I did! Thank you! <laughs> and hoping your year ends well. Thank you so much! I did! I thought it was very beautiful. Thank Thank you, thank you. Um, is this where I pre-order membership? Shut up! I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> membership. Don't jump the gun. We, we don't. We don't jump the gun. <laughs> Honestly, it is. It's granny. It's granny magic. It's granny magic. I'll tell you what she makes. <sighs> Listen. I'll tell you what she makes that I can't, well, I probably would eat it. I'm gonna be honest, I'd probably eat it. If it was in front of me, I would probably eat it. My granny makes the best deer hash in the whole world. If you've never, if you've never had deer, to be honest, I'm not that crazy about deer meat and other forms, but specifically deer hash is one of the most delicious foods in the entire world, okay? It's so yummy, and the way that my granny makes it, I just can't. <sighs> It's so good. It's so freaking good. Especially because, you know, when she does make it, it's like a special occasion, you know, because like maybe my cousin will go and hunt a deer and then it'll get you know, sent to the local butcher and then she'll get the meat and treat it and make it from scratch. <sighs> Y'all. Y'all. It's so good. It's so good. I really, even though I stopped eating meat, if that was in front of me, I'd probably eat it. <laughs> I would probably eat it. It's one of the most delicious things I've ever put in my mouth in my whole life. <laughs> you know, I, I have had deer meat in chili, but I've never had it in tacos. Uh, yeah, it's very similar where, where I grew up. It's like, you kind of have to hunt them or they would get overpopulated. It would be really crazy. And if you've, if you've, ever, if you've ever witnessed a car that's uh, hit a deer, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> It's really not good. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Back back home is one of those places where they really have to hunt the deer. It gets it gets out of control. There's too many of them. So it's uh, you know a necessary uh, cycle. <laughs> it's good for the environment. So uh, sending thoughts and prayers since you're the only one not monetized yet. Memberships question mark ha. Huh? Keep dreaming. Oh, I know, Moshi-san. I know. It's just. <sighs> It's just so terrible how, how it's, YouTube just hates me. I don't know why YouTube hates me so much and won't give me, it won't give me monetization. How crazy is that? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm shedding so many tears. <laughs> uh, I went pescatarian uh, mostly for like, environmental reasons. I don't necessarily think that it's morally wrong to eat animals. I mean, I don't know, sometimes I go through phases. I look at a really cute animal and I'm like, how could you hurt this animal? How could you do it? But for the most part, I don't necessarily think it's morally wrong to eat animals. I just don't really like the way that the country I live in goes about it, if that makes sense. 
I just think that the meat isn't particularly good for you and the animals aren't treated right and uh, it's hurting the environment. So I would just personally like to put as little bit of money into it as I can, if that makes sense. But that's why, you know, if I, if I can source the meat, I feel a lot better about it, if that makes sense. To be honest, I would probably go full vegetarian because I know there's a lot of issues with <laughs> <laughs> fish farming and wild caught fish too and overfishing. Listen, I know there's a lot of issues with that too, but listen, I just really love tuna. I just really love tuna. I really love it, okay? Would you eat horse meat? Um, yeah, I probably would. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of weird now since I stopped eating most meat, but I'm pretty open to trying. Like when I ate meat, I would pretty much try anything. I'll try anything once, you know? Uh, if it's served to me, like if I, if I shouldn't say that, like if I think it's from a reputable place, <laughs> if I thought it was from a reputable place, I would try it. Uh, I don't get super squeamish about food, uh, so you know I, I I grew up eating stuff like chicken livers and tripe and stuff, so I don't I don't get super squeamish. The only thing I get really squeamish about is uh, like blood. Like I don't think I could eat blood sausage, and I don't think I could eat blood soup. That kind of freaks me out. <laughs> you know, human, human, I probably, I don't know, I think, I think I would maybe, if the circumstances were right, you know, obviously only under very, very specific circumstances, but you, you, it's like you only live once, right? Like if human meat was really served to you, and it wasn't like, in a weird, sketchy, or unethical way, why not try it? You only live once, why not, you know? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy for that. <laughs> uh, oh, you guys like blood sausages? I've heard that it's good. I have actually heard that it's very good. But I just... I don't know. Something about it kind of freaks me out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe like a survival situation? I don't know. I don't know about a survival situation, actually. I don't mean like that. I think I mean more like... Um... Like, you know how they were trying to grow human meat in like laboratories and stuff so that people could try to eat it? Do you know what I'm talking about? So like if they grew like human meat in a laboratory and were like, hey, you could try this. It'll taste like a human. Like I would eat that. I actually cannot see myself in a survival situation like killing and eating someone. I wouldn't. I'd probably just cry and starve to death. <laughs> I would probably just cry and starve to death. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> but yeah, how did how the heck how the heck did we get on this conversation? How the heck? Not Soylent. <laughs> Not the Soylent. <laughs> lab meat, I would try. I know it freaks a lot of people out. Lab meat, lab grown meat really freaks people out, but I would try it. I don't care. I would eat it. I don't know. I would. But that kind of stuff doesn't freak me out, I don't know. Because <laughs> a lot of people uh, get really freaked out too about stuff that they can do with um, like pregnancies and stuff, you know? Like if you get artificially inseminated, you can kind of pick whether it's a boy or a girl a lot of times. That doesn't bother me. I know that really bothers some people. And I guess I kind of see like the gut reaction. That just does not bother me. I'm like, that's fine, I don't care. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be soy? I don't I don't remember all the science behind it. I'd be interested I'll because it's been a really long time since I read about it So I don't remember all the science, but it would not be soy It, it would it would it, it wouldn't be soy. I don't know how we got here <laughs> All I want to do is make <laughs> All I want to do is make a, a pecan chocolate pie with my granny's recipe, please <laughs> I want to be a hobbit and eat stuffed mushrooms and potato soup. <laughs> Very normal foods. As a scientist, lab meat freaks me out. I, I guess I get it. Like, like, I do. It's definitely not one of those situations where I'm like, you guys are crazy for being freaked out by that. That's not freaky at all. I guess I kind of get where you're coming from. It just personally doesn't scare me. I don't know. I would eat it. I would eat it. <laughs> I don't know! I don't know how we got on this. <laughs> Wait, we gotta change the subject. Uh, I feel like... 
I feel like I opened a whole can of worms and now you guys are gonna call me a cannibal. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> I just, I don't know. Uh, quick, 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 what else happened? What else, ha I'm sorry, I'm moving around like crazy right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can't stand still because I've been in a car for like 500 years. So it keeps losing tracking, oops. I, I never sit down for that long. So when I really, really honestly, my butt was so freaking numb. Okay, no, I don't, I don't think it is okay for you to call me both a normie and a cannibal. You gotta pick one, okay? I feel like those things are in fact mutually exclusive. So you gotta pick one, okay? Pick one, you selfish. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I can't be both! Yes, the 12 hour drive really did take all of the feeling out of my butt. I kept like, like shifting in my seat. I'm like <laughs> moving around. I'm like sitting on the edge of my butt, like trying to get feeling back. <laughs> yes, I have my standing desk, so. I am standing at my desk. <laughs> there can't be a special exception for me. This is so rude. If you guys don't start being nice to me, I'm not gonna tell you my special announcement. If you don't start being nice to me, I'm not gonna tell you my special announcement and then you'll never know. You'll never know what it was, since none of you could guess. Shro Schrodinger's Normie? <laughs> not Schrodinger's Normie. Rooney Rude? Rooney Rude? Mm-mm. Um, I'm trying to think what else I got for Christmas. Oh, wait, I got something really funny. I got something really funny. Okay, so I got really into tie-dyeing for a little while. And I was making tie-dye shirts all the time. And I made my mom this tie-dye shirt that ended up being really cute. It is by far the cutest tie-dye shirt that I have ever made in my entire life. It is so cute. It's mostly white and it's got like aqua and pink and yellow and peach little blobs on it. I don't know, just the colors turned out perfect. The pattern turned out perfect. It's beautiful. And I made it as a gift for my mom. And then I gave it to my mom and I immediately wanted it back. <laughs> So I joke, I joke every time that she wears it that she should give it back to me. <laughs> and I didn't think that she would actually do it. I really didn't think she, she would actually give it back to me, but she did. <laughs> she wrapped it up and gave it back to me for Christmas. <laughs> so now the tie-dye shirt is mine and I'm never giving it back. <laughs> It was a joke! I was joking! <laughs> I didn't... I really didn't think that she was gonna give it back. But every time I saw it, I just was like... That's a really cute tie-dye shirt. I kind of want it. <laughs> I thought it was very sweet. I thought it was very sweet that she gave it to me. Truly evil! <laughs> no, no! <laughs> I'll make... I'll make her another one. I, I guilt tripped my mom into re-gifting. It's okay. It's okay. Because I, I don't think she minds because I got her a gift that she really likes. Do you guys... Oh, wait. I, I brought this up earlier. Now we'll get to it. Do you guys remember how I said that my mom really wants a cat? And how I just wasn't sure about... <laughs> no, you can't borrow my tie-dye shirt! Don't even look at it. You're not even allowed to look at my tie-dye shirt. You better keep your nasty, dirty little eyes off of it. It's mine. It's my tie-dye shirt. Who do you think you are, huh? I'll curse you. If you even think, if you even think about looking at my tie-dye shirt, I'll curse you. So remember how I was saying that my, my mom really wanted a cat, but I didn't think that it was a great idea because I already had two cats and she really wanted a pet of her own, but then I was feeling... <laughs> you guys already see where this is going. <laughs> okay, what really happened, what really, what really was going on is what my mom really wanted was a dog. Which is an even bigger commitment. It's more expensive. And it's just, it's an even bigger commitment is a dog. But listen. 
My mom had a rough Christmas, okay? My mom had a rough Christmas, and I had already resolved myself to let her get a cat, as I told you guys. And uh, we were with my grandparents, and we were with my grandparents' dog, and my mom was loving on that dog, just loving and loving on that dog. And I could just tell, like, what my mom, what my mom really wanted, what my mom really needs from a pet is like, she needs a dog. That's what she really wants. And I love dogs. I love dogs. I have no problem with dogs. I think they're great, fantastic. They're just, you know, more maintenance. They're just harder work, right? More expensive, more maintenance, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But after I saw my mom with, with my grandparents' dog, I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so, so we're getting, we're getting a hellhound. <laughs> and it's so crazy because I thought that it was going to take a little bit longer to find the perfect hellhound, but I don't know, my mom jumped online and she found one super fast. Like literally tomorrow, we're getting a t 10 a week old hellhound. <laughs> so uh, you guys might hear barking in the future. <laughs> I am excited though. It's gonna be a little tough because, you know, I have two cats and they're a little bit territorial, especially over me. So the plan is right now is I'm gonna basically pay the dog very little attention. I'm gonna put all of my attention on my cats so that they feel like, just, just to solidify that they're older, this is their home, they're still my babies, they're number one, they're my priority, just so that they don't get ter territorial or aggressive towards the dog. So I'm, I'm really excited. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like, oh no, what did I do? But then I see my mom talk about it and she's so freaking excited about this dog. She's so excited. I wish it was a chihuahua. It's not a chihuahua. It is a hellhound, which are pretty close. I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty close. But I actually chihuahuas are one of my favorite types of dogs. I love a chihuahua. I love their temperament. I like chihuahuas and I like schnauzers. <gasps> Oh, oh, a chihuahua, a schnauzer. But our hellhound is gonna be very cute. She's gonna be big. <laughs> She's gonna be very big. I'm very excited. Oh, Demogorgon. I did not get a Demogorgon for Christmas. Listen, I got a lot of really lovely gifts. I got a candle, I got the tie-dye t-shirt, I got my sun lamp, I got the 1976 silver dollar. I got a lot of really cool gifts, really cool gifts, but I did not, in fact, get. I did not, in fact, get a Demogorgon, but maybe next year. You know, maybe next year. Maybe next year. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Hellhounds only second to pit bulls as problematic breeds. Oh man, I've had some, I've met some really good pit bulls. My granny with the chickens had a pit bull for a really long time named Sweetie. That was one of the, like, okay, literally her name was Sweetie because she was the sweet, the sweetest dog you've ever met in your whole life. Would not hurt a fly, this dog. Oh, I miss her. She was so sweet. I love pit bulls because they always look like they're, they're smiling. <laughs> It was! It was rough to not get a Demogorgon. It was rude. I think I worked very hard. I think I deserved. I think I deserved a Demogorgon. <laughs> but next year. <laughs> next year. <laughs> treats, uh, my sister Chihuahua treats me like a stranger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They can be bad like that. And then, and then they're nice to you. I've definitely met Chihuahuas like that. I love. I think Jack Russell Terriers are great too. I... I'm really not that picky about dog breeds. I, you know, I can't even think like, there's not really a dog breed that I dislike, really. I had a bad experience with a chow when I was little, but I would give them a second chance. I've only met, I've only met one chow in my entire life. I've only met one chow and it was not a good experience. That chow was in fact mean to me, but I would give chows a second chance because that was just one. I really like I really like Chihuahuas um, because my not my granny with my ch with the chickens but my granny who can cook the other granny she uh, rescues Chihuahuas so while I was growing up she always had so many like I, I went and visited her too she had let me think how many one two three four she had four ch four Chihuahuas at when I visited her 
over the weekend and one other mutt dog. I don't know what it was. It was very cute. It was very, it was very small. Uh, but I, so I grew up around chihuahuas, so I just like them. And she's like the chihuahua whisperer because, you know, she would get rescue chihuahuas. So some of those chihuahuas had, you know, some issues. They had issues, but she was really good. She's always been really good with chihuahuas and, and, and making them very comfortable and good around humans again and stuff. So you had a chow going up and it was evil. Are chows just evil? I mean, I condone, I do condone, I condone them being evil, I just maybe will stay a little bit away. I'll just maybe stay a little bit away. <laughs> Cause it does kind of scare me. I like a Shih Tzu, I do. I like Huskies too, oh. Huskies are so cute. They're so cute and fluffy. I like Pomeranians too. You would not. Uh, oh, what's the name for a Shih Tzu Pomeranian? A Pom Pom Tzu? A Pom Shi? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever met one of those, but I've met a lot of Shih Tzus and I've met a lot of Pomeranians. Pomeranians are good. <laughs> they always look sickly. Uh, they can. They do have a tendency to shake. I know that that gets. That rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Like they don't like when they hold the chihuahua, that the chihuahua will shiver. I, I don't know, maybe just cause I'm used to it, it doesn't bother me. The cutest evil animal? Hmm. I'm, well, I would probably say cats. I would have to say cats. Cause cats truly are, like I said before, there is no such thing as like a regular cat and a demon cat. All cats are demons, all of them. And they're also freaking adorable. I got, I got two demon cats to my left over here and they are in fact being evil right now. <laughs> not, <laughs> not ball of sh <laughs> That's what you call it. Probably does look like a ball if it's got Pomeranian in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they, they just vibrate. I don't know, it doesn't bother me. Chows are a working breed, guard dogs if I'm not mistaken. They take a lot of training and socializing. Yeah, maybe that was the problem is that the one that I had just didn't have a, have the right training because it was kind of mean. And if I remember right, am I crazy? I think its tongue was blue. I'm almost positive that this dog's tongue was blue. I think so. Oh, Maine Coons are cute. Maine Coons are very cute. <laughs> Squirrels are a greater evil than cats, but I don't think they're cuter. Maybe squirrels, I will maybe give you that squirrels are e more evil. It's possible. They are a little su suspect to me, but I don't think that they're quite as cute as a cat. Oh, black tongues, the, the blue or blue or black tongues. Yeah, this one had a blue tongue and it scared me. <laughs> it scared me really bad. And then I went, where was I? I was at some, I can't remember where I was. It was like petting farm animals. I was petting farm animals and some sort of like, uh, I don't know, some sort of animal came up to me to eat and it had a blue tongue. And then I felt very scarred. I was like, oh no, not another creature with a blue tongue. I can't do this. And I ran away. I wish I could remember. It was like some sort of cow thing. It looked like a cow. But it wasn't a regular cow, and it had a blue tongue, and it scared the heck out of me. <laughs> I was not having it. No more blue tongues. I think I'm over it now. I'm over it. I'll give blue tongues a second chance. It's blue tongue redemption arc. <laughs> redemption arc for the blue tongues. A Russian blue. Oh, I do like Russian blue. So I actually have, I, um, I like to rescue my pets, but I do have a full bred flame point Siamese cat. <laughs> uh, but I, it just happened that way. I didn't buy him. He just, uh, he needed to be rehomed. So I rescued him and he just so happened to be full bred. And I love Siamese cats. Siamese cats, they're so loud, they're so talkative, they're so amazing. I love, love, love them. I can't get enough of Siamese. Muyu, does Muyu have a blue tongue? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have we, have we seen, have we seen Muyu's tongue? Do we need to do some investigation here? 
to see? I'll have to ask later. <laughs> oh, a lab? A lab with a blue tongue, huh? I've never seen a lab with a blue tongue. They do, Siamese! They talk a whole bunch. They're very, very talkative. Just crazy, crazy amounts. <laughs> 16 years old! Oh my goodness! <gasps> oh! So precious! So precious! Oh! I hope my cats live that long. I'll be so happy. 16 years old. Oh, best wishes to your Siamese. Her model has a pink tongue? Okay, then her tongue is her tongue is pink then. Hmm. 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 Alright. Then 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 I will then I will retract suspicion. <laughs> I retract my suspicions. Because Muyu does in fact have a pink tongue. <laughs> Mm. I've definitely seen animals with spots on their tongues before. I think that's cute. I also think it's really cute when they have um, spots on their paw pads. That's also very, very cute to me. Oh, it's so freaking cute. <laughs> ah, I love paw pads. I abuse my cat's paw pads. They get annoyed with me. <laughs> but they're so cute. One of my cats has pink paw pads and the other one has black paw pads. Both good. So cute. So freaking cute. Oh, I'm so tired. Whoa, 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 whoa. <sighs> Trying to think of anything else funny happened on the drive. Oh, well, here's another thing is that my mom cannot stand when I drive with my knees, but I really like driving with my knees because sometimes I need both hands to like open a bottle of water or to eat food or I don't know, just to move my hands around. I like to drive with my knees, but she can't stand it. So I was trying so freaking hard not to drive with my knees and I didn't realize how often I do it like every time I started to lift my knee to take to take the wheel I was I, it, it was actually egregious do you guys drive with your knee I do it all the time yeah w okay wait and I do drive well I do drive well I can drive I'm really good at driving with my knee I'm so good like, exactly, only pro drivers. The fact that I can drive with my knee makes me a pro driver. I'm not a menace, okay? I drive with my knee so I have both my hands free. I got really good at it because uh, there was a portion of my life <laughs> where I uh, used to, I had this routine where I would grab a thing of sushi and then I would drive to a rehearsal. And so on the drive there, I would have to eat the sushi and you know, sushi takes two hands, right? You gotta hold the thing and then the other hand for my chopsticks. So I got very good at driving with my knees so that I could eat sushi in the car. And I did. I would drive every day and I would eat with chopsticks my sushi in the car. <laughs> um, it's, it's not about length, okay? Actually what I do is I kind of like prop my foot up like against the seat. It's kind of hard to describe. I prop my foot either up against the seat or like up against my other leg and then I just press I press my thigh into it and then I steer that way. I can't do a turn. That's the only thing I can't do. Maybe if I use both knees, I might could do a turn. I so I definitely couldn't do a U-turn. I can't do a turn, but if I'm just going straight, like if all I need to do is stay in the two lanes, then I don't need I don't need my hands. I can just do it with my knee. The one foot stays down. That's the thing is one one foot is stays down by the pedals So I can still hit the gas and I can break. It's just the one knee is like propped up and pressed up against the the wheel Oh, you can turn too with your knees. I should try if I tried that I'll try one day <laughs> Okay, honestly, I would rather just drive with my knees than ask my mom to take the wheel. I'm not gonna lie <laughs> I'm not a hazard on the road. I'm literally so good at driving. I have never caused a wreck. I've never. I'm not lying to you. I'm truly, I'm truly cracked at driving. I can't believe you guys don't believe me. You wouldn't get in a car with me? You're concerned? I'm so, I'm so good at driving, you guys. <laughs> 
I am very careful. It's because I'm so defensive that I can get away with being kind of crazy. Does that make sense? I'm a very defensive driver. And I, I feel like I've already said this before, but I really do. I have like ESP when it comes to cars on the road. I can just tell what they're doing. I can tell what they're doing. Like I said, my mom got really freaked out. She went, dog! like that because she didn't see that the car was about to change lanes without its blinker but I knew I knew way ahead of time I could just tell like there's just a way that a car moves there's a feeling that I get from the car and I can just see okay that car is gonna do something sketchy this car is gonna uh, cut this car off it's gonna merge without its turn signal it's gonna slow down I, I just have ESP which one makes me very good at avoiding wrecks which I have and also it makes me very good at weaving in and out of traffic because I just understand, I understand the flow, the flow of traffic. So I can, <laughs> I have an S for <laughs> only with driving, only with driving. <laughs> You're an offensive driver? No, see, I'm very defensive. Maybe it is sorcery. Maybe it's the all of my demons whispering into my ear to protect me. It's possible that I have, it's possible that I'm cheating. Maybe I'm cheating and getting help from my demons. <laughs> you know, weave in and out of traffic. Oh my gosh, but that does make me think. I was behind this car on the way up uh, and that car, oh my gosh, it was, I don't know what they thought they were. I think they thought they were a race car driver trying to get like debris off their tires, but they were literally in the lane, like swerving like a snake back and forth. I was like, dude, what are you doing? We were in like pretty much bumper to bumper traffic. And this guy <laughs> in front of me was literally like a snake in the lane. I was like, what do you think you're doing? Why are you doing that? Very bizarre. I've never seen anything like that. Everyone's a good cr driver until they crash. Okay, good. Well, then until I crash, you better say I'm a good driver. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 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 Until I crash, then I'm a good driver. How about dim apples? <laughs> it wasn't me. I would never do that. It was very... It was very bizarre. We saw a lot of crazy stuff. Not so much on the way back, but on the drive there, people were really being crazy. I mean, people are always kind of crazy on the road, but they were extra crazy. Not Jeff Gordon rush hour traffic. <laughs> it wasn't me. I would never do that. Like I said, I'm very chill. I'm chill on the road. <sighs> I like, But beating the traffic, sometimes there's just no way to do it. Sometimes you just got to sit there and take it. But you know what, I'm, I'm also very good at just navigating crowds. You know, just crowds of people. Like if, if it's really crowded and, and I need to get from place A to place B, I can just weave in and out of the crowd so easy. I'm like, they cannot stop me. You cannot stop me. I will get to the top of the line. I will get to the front of the concert. <laughs> I cannot be held back by crowds of people, but I feel like I just I feel like I sink in I see I sink Not sink like s i n k but sink like s y n k I sink with the flow of the crowd and then I like me and the crowd are one and I just It's like floating in the ocean. I'm floating in the ocean and I just and I just bop and 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 swim and navigate effortlessly through the through the water except the water is asphalt uh filled with people <laughs> wait did i say the did i sell it right <laughs> did i spell it wrong shut up <laughs> it's spelled like that it's spelled like that in the freaking phase world ask anybody you guys are so weird for spelling it with a c you guys are so weird. It's spelled with a K in the phase world. What's wrong with you? S-Y-N-K, ask anybody, ask anybody. Ask anybody from the phase world, that's how it's spelled. Shut up. <laughs> Y'all are on my nerves. Don't act like you didn't know that. S-Y-N-K, that's how it's spelled. Get out of here. <laughs> Not a synchronization. <laughs> 
That does seem like the spelling of like a band. Like a band would come out and then spell it like that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, go ask. Go ask. They'll vouch for me. They'll vouch for me. Tell them. But but you better preface preface it. Hold preface it right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can't believe I did that. That's kind of embarrassing. I'm going to pretend that that didn't happen. It never happened and I won't admit to it. <clears throat> ner ner nerves. 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 Oh man, I do put an L on the end of it. Nerves. You are on my nerves. You are on my nerves. 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 Not a face, face connect with a Z. Face connect. <laughs> put your cameras away. Put your gut, put, put. Put that camera away. I don't allow photographs. I am not taking photography, flash, no flash photography at this time. <laughs> Mission failed, successfully sink. <laughs> Nothing happened, exactly. Did anything happen? No, nothing happened. Nerves. 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 <laughs> the face connect is just getting more and more butchered. <laughs> the spelling is just getting more and more butchered. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You'll turn the flash off? I see flashes right now. I see flashes on those cameras. You said you would turn the flash off. You're a liar. You're a dirty liar. That's okay. I like that. It's okay. I like that. <laughs> Ouch! If you keep sitting them, I'm gonna go blind. Oh, all these flashes in my eye. Oh my gosh. I'm blind. I'm blind now. I can't see. Oh no. Ah! Oh, oh no. Oh, oh my gosh. I don't know how long I want to stream for today. Not the speech, yeah, the speech therapy. Sometimes, you know. There you go, thank you for turning the flash off. I appreciate it. No, put your flash off! Some of you guys just want me to go blind, don't you? Is that, is that gonna make you happy? It's okay, I don't need my eyes to see. I can see with my ESP. <laughs> I can see with my demonic ESP. <laughs> you'll never escape. Even if I'm blind, you'll never escape. <laughs> it's 12 hours. I am not streaming for 12 hours. Are you a jokester? Are you a jokester? I have to work tomorrow. Ugh. Blah, blah. That's how I feel about that. So I have to get up early. So I don't want to stream for too, too awful long because of that, but we'll see. I'm trying to figure out how long I've been streaming and I just can't see it anywhere. <laughs> Am I crazy? Oh, I see it now. Okay. I've been streaming for an hour and 25 minutes. Okay. Hey, hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, I got that rune vision. I got that rune vision. <laughs> I'm not spelling anything else. I refuse to spell any more words on this here unholy stream <laughs> it's not happening eighty five eighty five ish eighty five ish minutes shut up shut up shut up shut up <laughs> I refuse to spell ESP, but I will spell rendezvous. Now I feel like you might have misspelled it. I was I thought I had you there for a second. R E N D E Z V O U S. That's right, right? <laughs> I am unholy, it's true. I am unholy. There is not a single hole. No, not a single hole. No hole. <laughs> I can't see. Waco Mundo. Waco Mundo sobbing right now. 
Waco Mundo in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> Not a single hole. Grimjow, Grimjow took my hole. All, all of Waco Mundo, all of the Iran card took my took my holes. <laughs> and this is why I am now unholy. R E N D E Z V O U S. <laughs> Man, that makes me want to watch Bleach. I love the Iran card arc. It's so good. Like, it's so ridiculous. It really does not make a lick of sense. Don't ask me to explain Bleach to you. It doesn't make any sense. It's just cool, man. It's so cool. <laughs> uh, I really hate that I mess up the latency on this stream because I'm seeing that for, of all streams to mess up the latency on, it's a just chatting stream <laughs> and everything's delayed. Oopsie. My bad. Oops. <laughs> I was in a hurry. <laughs> I've really been enjoying the new episodes of Bleach too. Absolutely. They've been really fun. The animation is just stellar. It's so beautiful. And like I said, I was so excited to see Shinji's Bankai. It was really cool. Bleach is just swords go burr. I mean, you are really not wrong. You are really not wrong. <laughs> Can we talk about this? Is, this is what has me really confused about Bleach, man. Is that Orihime literally healed Grimjow's arm at one point, and then I feel like everyone just forgot that she had that ability. She healed this man's whole arm. Whole. <laughs> Wiggle Mundo. Orihime healed that man's whole entire arm, and then I feel like she's not done anything since then. <laughs> What? Why? I think that would have been helpful like 15, 20, 30 times after that. The whole arm. I love Kone. When I was watching with my demons, I have uh, one of my demons does not like Kone at all. Really annoys her. She can't stand Kone, but I've always been a Kone truther, okay? I'm a Kone stan. I think he's cute. And yeah, I like buff cone, why not? <laughs> oh, Kenchang! Everything Kenpachi does is cool. Everything. Everything Kenpachi does is super cool. I'm a little bit worried about his little friend though. I forget what her name is. Cause we don't know, cause I haven't read the manga. So as far as we know, I don't know exactly what happened to her. Is she dead? I mean, not to spoil things. I don't know, I don't know. It's a question. I can't spoil it because I literally don't know the answer. Um, I guess we'll find out. Why? <laughs> I do like Ikaku. Shut up. How did you know that? Wait, how did you know that? I actually really like Ikaku. Ikaku is so, f so fun. I like his little makeup. He makes me laugh. I wish there was more Ikaku. I'm always rooting for Ikaku. I know he's never going to get major W's because it's Bleach and only Ichigo is allowed to get the W's. But... Yeah. Ikaku is really... I can't ever remember his friend's name. What's his friend's name? The one with the feather eyebrow? Why? Ikaku is bad! Why is he bad? Why would you say that? He's bald? Yeah, he's... Oh, wait a minute. Shut up. You're saying that I like him because he's bald? That's why you think I like him? Shut up. Be for real with me right now. <laughs> I like him for other reasons. I also like that he's bald. Shut up. That makes me think uh, I was trying to get... <laughs> I was trying to get one of my demons to watch or read Golden Kamui, and I was going crazy. I was listening to all of the things about Golden Kamui that are really good, and why, you know, she should really get into Golden Kamui, right? And at this point, she already knew that, like, I like characters with very short brown hair. I like short brown hair on my characters. And so she lets me go on this whole spiel. Let's me go on this entire spiel about how much she should watch Golden Kamui. And then she's like, I'm not gonna call you out right now. 
I'm just saying that it seems like you really like this series, but doesn't it also just so happen to be completely filled with characters with short brown hair? I was speechless. What do I say to that? It's true, but that's not why I like it. That's not why it's good. That's not why it's good, okay? It's objectively good. It has nothing to do with the fact <laughs> that it's full of characters with short brown hair, okay? I like it for other reasons, and I like Ikaku for other reasons too, and I like Ruri Jane for other reasons. Now, Tien, I don't know. I don't know about Tien. I might not be able to defend myself there. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rooney. I can never forgive you for the Urahara slander. He's my favorite. Well, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry that he's your favorite and I slandered him. I just feel terrible. I feel terrible about it. Awful, horrible, it's atrocious. The feelings inside me right now. Ugh. I won't be able to sleep tonight. I won't be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> Uruhara hate. I won't. I, w I, I just can't. I can't like, I understand why people do. It's a character trope that a lot of people like. I just tend to not like it. What if Uruhara was bald? I still wouldn't like him. Shut up, I still wouldn't like him. Urohara is a Rooney and Bleach universe. You better take that back. You better take that back. <laughs> what if Urohara had short brown hair? It's not saving him. Because you know who does have short brown hair? Is Ichigo's dad. And I'm not forgiving him either. I hate him for very much the same reasons that I dislike Urohara. The short brown hair did not save him from my fury, from my wrath. No take back scenes. I'm, I, I, you know, I understand why people like him. He's just not for me. I can't get past the logic of it, man. I can't get past the logic of it. Not him getting a haircut arc. I don't care if he's hot, okay? I don't care if he's hot. Is his hair black? Is it black or brown? No. Ichigo's dad? Ichigo's dad's hair is brown, right? About to look up a picture. Uh, I swear, yeah, his hair, oh, I guess it. Oh gosh. I think it depends on the picture. Cause sometimes it does look kind of black, but I think other times it looks brown. It's probably that, that brown that's like really dark that it's looks black most of the time, but if you, you hit it in the light right, and it's actually brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's brown. <laughs> uh, I think it just looks black sometimes in the anime, but I think it's brown. If Ishida doesn't have his glasses, I like Ishida no matter what. I'm a little bit worried though. Like I said, I don't know what I don't know what happens because I didn't read the manga. This is a very stressful situation for me because I usually know what's happening when I watch anime because I've already read the manga. It's very stressful to not know. This is what I will say. If Ishida is not playing some games right now and isn't actually betraying everybody else, I'm really gonna be mad. Cause we already went through this. We, we had a whole arc about this. We literally did a whole arc. We don't need to do the same arc again. What the heck? I really will be very upset if that's what happened. Just saw someone comment how you gaslit us out of discussing your feeding habits. <laughs> I had to go for a while earlier. What's, what about it? Um, yeah, I don't know what they're talking about. That's crazy. I think chat gaslit you. I think chat is gaslighting you right now, telling you that something happened that didn't even happen. Don't worry about it. Don't don't listen to chat. They're lying to you. <laughs> listen, if there's one thing we know, it's that you can't always trust chat. You can't always trust them. <laughs> I can't. No, I. It cannot be that he's just a traitor because we literally already did this plot point. We already did this plot point. I'm so tired. Dude, I. There has to be something more. I really will be pissed. I will for real be pissed. As far as my thoughts on Aizen, I don't think Aizen's wrong. 
I don't think Aizen's wrong. Soul Society's messed up. Think about what Soul Society did to the Visored, man. And the fact that you go to the afterlife and there's still like a class system? Come on. Soul Society's all, it's, it's completely messed up. It needs to be burnt to the ground and rebuilt. I don't necessarily think that Aizen is wrong. I just think he went about it the wrong way. Cause Aizen's like, I just want to take control of it, right? I want to destroy it and then take control of it. And I think that was going a little too far. I think it should be destroyed though. I mean, that's kind of what I'm hoping. I'm hoping, I don't know how it ends. Don't tell me, don't spoil me. But I'm kind of hoping that at the end of it, Ichigo's kind of like, you know what? Like the Quincy's have a point. This is kind of messed up. And then maybe Ichigo just destroys all of Soul Society and then they just rebuild it and make it better. I, I sympathize with Aizen. I don't necessarily like his methods, but I don't think that he was wrong. Because there's so many times I'm watching Bleach and I'm like, I'm supposed to be rooting for these people? <laughs> Soul Society's messed up. It's messed up. It needs to be brought down. <laughs> Especially when you find out, now I forget what they're called, but when you find out that they're like the strongest of them have just been chilling up in that upper layer, heaven layer or whatever. They, they saw all that stuff happening with eyes and they just didn't do anything about it. They let all of those people die. You want to know who else let all of those people die without doing anything about it? I'm not going to say it because you know. <laughs> Isn't it the best when the dudes are just the worst? Hmm, maybe. Maybe sometimes. I like a villain sometimes. <laughs> Got it. Aizen was right because he has short breath. No! 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 You set me up for that. You set me up for that. <laughs> I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. It has nothing to do with his short <laughs> it has nothing to do <coughs> It has nothing to do with the fact that he has short brown hair You made me so mad I'm coughing <coughs> It's 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 tangential, 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 tangential to the fact that he's just also right. <laughs> I can't believe this. I can't believe this keeps happening to me. Aizen is hot though, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Aizen. Aizen really did, Aizen had me going too. I don't know if I told you guys this yet. When I was watching Bleach for the first time, I really did not see it coming. Maybe I'm stupid, maybe I got blinded by his short brown hair. But I, I literally, I was so on board. I was like, this guy, he's so sweet, he's so nice, he dies. I was devastated. I was so sad. I was like, I can't believe this. I'm telling my demons who have all watched already, so they already know what's coming. I'm lamenting, I'm lamenting to my demons. I'm crying actual tears. Cause I was like, dang, I really thought he was gonna be my favorite. He was gonna be my favorite character. I was really rooting for him. I can't believe they just killed him off. Like that is so cruel. And then he came back and he was evil? Shut up. It was a good arc. I enjoyed it. And I think he's coming back. I mean, he's still around. We know that the Quincy King went and talked to him. I think Aizen's coming back. <laughs> I, I, believe, I believe in Aizen, he'll come back. My, my demons, they really did. They just let me, they let me wallow. They thought it was funny. <laughs> Oh, I guess that technically is spoilers, but that show came out a long time ago. Sorry if I spoiled it. <laughs> yeah, he, he literally, he put the glasses and slicked his hair back. I was like... It was the same way I felt when Pudding, because Pudding got me two in one piece. I felt so stupid. Pudding pulled one over me. 
because I was reading Whole Cake Island and I'm texting my demons who again, they already know what's going on. They already know. So I'm texting my demons like, oh, Pudding is an angel. Pudding is too good for Sanji. Sanji needs to stay a million miles away from Pudding. Pudding is perfect. She's sweet baby angel. I love her. Delicate, beautiful, kind. Everything I aspire to be. Just totally head over heels, okay? And then... <laughs> oh, she pulled her hair back. She had that third eye. She was so evil. I love pudding. I loved her even more. I love her even more. I fell so hard. I had already fallen. I had already fallen for her. And then she turned out evil. Oh man. Evil pudding is so good. And now and now I think that her and Sanji can be together. <laughs> now I approve. <laughs> when I thought she was truly just a sweet wholesome thing, I wasn't I wasn't a fan. But now now that we know now that we know pudding for real, and especially now that she's so tsundere, now I approve. Now I want Sanji and Pudding to get together. I actually will, I'll be a little sad if they're not in game. I mean, I feel like they will be. I, I don't know, I don't know how specific Oda's gonna make the endings, like if he, I don't, I can't tell if he actually wants to do things like get characters together, if he just wants to like leave it ambiguous. I'd be happy either way, but it would make me really happy if Sanji and Pudding got together. Evil equals hot. Sometimes that's the truth. Yeah, that's why I'm like super hot. <laughs> that's why I'm like super duper hot. <laughs> Cause I'm so super duper evil. Thank you, thank you for agreeing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, stop, shut up chat, shut up. Don't tell me, don't, don't inflate my ego, stop, no. Shh, shh, we all know, we all know. <laughs> it doesn't need to be said. <laughs> I, no, I don't think, is she the only girl that's been, <laughs> is she the only girl that's been in, into him? I'm trying to think, actually, you might be right. You might be right. <laughs> Why are you guys being mean? Adorkable. I just want you guys to know that you're literally contradicting yourself. That's how crazy you are. You look crazy. Because you just said that evil equals hot. And you know that I'm evil, so then do the math. Why is it, it's not it's not adding up for you guys? It's not adding up. <laughs> I think Osome from Onigashima, though. I think that was only in the a anime, because I don't remember that happening in the manga. I think in the I think in the manga, like that whole scene where she brings him food and stuff, I don't remember reading that. I don't think that happened. I think that was anime only. But I think, uh, what's her name? Scar oh, what was her name? Uh, in Dress Rosa. Uh, she was the princess. She had the dark hair. She had the really cool power uh, where she could like, uh, she had the eyeball power that was actually kind of broken. That power was really cool. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I forget what her name is. I want to say like Rosalina. That feels wrong. Uh, Scarlet, what was her name? Thank you for the dono, for the bleach rant, thank you. <laughs> I love bleach, I'll, I'll rant about bleach anytime. <laughs> we can't add up and you can't spell <laughs> perfectly balanced. I'm a really good speller. I'm so good, I'm gonna throw a spelling bee just to prove it. Viola, that's right, yes, it is, it is a, Viola, Viola? I think Viola was kind of into Sanji. I don't think it would have ever gone anywhere because Viola has her her whole other agenda that's going on, you know? But I do think that Viola was kind of into Sanji. I don't think it would happen, but I do think she was kind of into him. So, maybe, maybe, but I, yeah, I think, I really think if, if he's going to end up with someone, it probably would be Pudding, and that would make me happy. Yeah, I could see her being a Scarlet. I could definitely see her. The true heroine of Dressrosa. I did like her a little bit better than I liked Rebecca. Which made me sad because when, when we first met Rebecca, as you guys know, I really like um, Fire Emblem. And one of my favorite Fire Emblem characters of all time is Rebecca. 
And so I saw, I saw braids, and I saw a character named Rebecca, and I thought, this is gonna be my girl. This is gonna be my girl. She got braids, her name's Rebecca, I'm gonna love her. And I didn't dislike her. I just, I don't know, I feel like they should have maybe given her a little more, I, I like, I wish I could have seen her be a little more like, BA, you know, I wish she had gotten a better, like, like if she could have taken out uh, Diamante or something, I think that would have been cool. Diamante, right? That's the one that killed her mom. I think so. So I did, definitely didn't dislike her, but I ended up liking um, Viola more. Yeah, I agree. Like, the story just doesn't finish out as... It's not as narratively satisfying as Viola's is, you know? And I feel like Viola's has a little bit of mystery in there, too. Because she's got, like, those kind of sus interactions with Dofi. I don't know. I, I found her much more intriguing and I felt more satisfied by the ending to her story. You know who else is? I also... I really, really freaking liked uh, Baby Five's story in Dressrosa. I love Baby Five so much. I do have a Switch, but I don't think I'll stream Fire Emblem. I don't, I don't think I want to stream. I probably won't stream any JRPGs. Uh, and I did, but I did play Three Houses. I did. I went, um, uh, the first route I did was the, the one I liked the best, and now I can't remember any of the names, but it's the one with Edelgard. Edelgard? <laughs> well, I can't, I can't remember anything. It's really not even been that long, but I liked that route, because I really hated the dragon lady. The, the head of the church dragon lady, she had to go. I hated her so much. <laughs> I could not. <laughs> My hatred for her knew no bounds. <laughs> she was so sus to me immediately. So that was my- the Black Eagles? Black Eagles? That feels right. That's the one I did. But I probably won't play any JR JRPGs. Yeah, they take a really long time. Yeah, Black Eagles. I didn't play Engage. To be honest, I wasn't that crazy about Three Houses. So I didn't- I didn't end up playing Engage. Rhea! That was her name. <sighs> It, it was really, you know, you know what it was is because I liked my dad and we're chilling, we're doing our own thing. And then Rhea comes out of nowhere and then she's like, you got to go now. I, like she basically blackmails you, your, your poor father. And I'm like, we were chilling, we were happy. And I knew, I knew instantly that it was going to get him killed. I knew whatever happened, Rhea was blackmailing him and... It was gonna get him killed, and I was just not okay with that. And guess what? I was right. And I did not forgive her. She should've just minded her own business and left us alone. That was rude. That was sketchy. But, okay, you guys know what it is, though. You guys know what really made me mad about it. What made me mad is that she was doing all this really sketchy stuff, and nobody wanted to call her out on it! It was like I was supposed to like her? I like, I feel like the game was like, yes, meet Rhea, Rhea, you're gonna love her. After she just blackmailed my dad and forced him to come to the school. No, of course I'm not gonna like her. Absolutely not. So yeah, Re Rhea was a flop for me. <laughs> Golden Deer is the best house and I will fight each and every one of you. <laughs> I, I don't feel passionately enough about it to fight over it, but I did, I did like the Black Eagles best. <laughs> Fire Emblem Dads, I know. Pour one out. <laughs> you guys want to know the most I've cried? The most I've cried in Fire Emblem is when Hector dies. <laughs> that made me cry so hard. Oh my, because I played the games backwards, right? So I already had this like deep connection with Hector and Hector was one of my favorite characters. So when Hector died, I could not handle it. I really cried. <laughs> I was a little kid too, and I cried so hard. I cried so hard that one of my friends took a picture. They thought it was funny. <laughs> Here I am sobbing my eyes out. My friend just takes a picture of me. She thinks it's funny that it made me that upset. But I liked Hector. <laughs> I liked Hector. <laughs> I, I feel like, uh, yeah, maybe I should get a spoiler. I could put like a spoiler alert thing that I toggle on and off. Yeah, rest in peace, Hector, man. Rest in peace. 
Maybe I'll make a spoiler. I feel like, I mean, for older stuff, I probably won't be that diligent about it. But especially for like One Piece things, I'm gonna need a spoiler warning so I don't start spoiling manga stuff for anime only. <laughs> Because that would be really bad. I need a spoiler warning for One Piece specifically. Specifically. And then maybe a general spoiler warning for other things. <laughs> he is a good bean. I would agree. You shouldn't go anywhere near Xenoblade. Oh, man. Okay. You've warned me. I get emotional really easy. I'm a crybaby. So if a game is even slightly sad, I will cry. I will cry big globular flat, flat, fat tears. Globular fat tears. Oh, uh, when Zack died in the mobile version of, of Final Fantasy VII. You know, I think I was, I don't remember crying during Final Fantasy VII. I might have. I don't remember crying during seven or eight. I would love to get into One Piece spoilers. I'm still trying to figure out what the best way would be to discuss like new chapter updates in a way that is not, <laughs> that is not uh, either inconsiderate or like, I don't know, I'm still, I'm still thinking of a way to do it. No, I don't think I cried when Aerith died. That's cause I, I think that, I don't know why. I liked Aerith. If it had been Tifa, I would have cried probably. I liked Tifa a lot more. Uh, I like, I liked Tifa more. If it had been Tifa, I definitely would have cried. But I didn't dislike Aerith, I don't know. Yeah, I guess now that I think back on it, that was weird of me. I feel like nowadays I probably would cry. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I did. I don't remember. It's very odd now that I think about it. <laughs> you sobbed like a girl. I. It was sad. I don't blame you. I don't know what was wrong with me. <laughs> you should. You should read it. Read it. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> We're on a break this week. I'm very sad. No manga update this week. It's been, it's kind of been uh, every other week lately, which is fine. Uh, I'd, I'd rather him take his time and not, and not feel rushed or hurt his health. At the same time, it's like, where is my weekly injection of One Piece? I will die without it, please. <laughs> I will die without it. Oh my goodness. The recent One Piece chapters made me cry so hard. You have no idea. Cry so hard I gave myself like throbbing headaches. <laughs> yes, yes, it can't have all three combined. It can be violent, it can have a sexual overtone, and it can be sad, but it cannot be all three of those things at the same time. Not that that makes it objectively bad, just that I personally probably won't like it. I'm sure there are exceptions, but I probably won't like it. <laughs> I, the amount of times I have actually sobbed over One Piece are just not even, and I cry, sometimes I cry over One Piece and it's not even that it's sad, it just makes me emotional. <laughs> I just get really excited about it sometimes and it makes me emotional and then I'll cry. <laughs> Nova, thank you for stopping by, Nova. Listen, no, Nova, Nova is the baby here. Nova is the baby. I'm a, I'm a hag. I mean, you guys can call me a baby if you want, but we all know the truth. We know the truth, but I condone lying in my chat. <laughs> Go ahead and lie if you want to. Lie, 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 lie. Wait, okay, I know I've told this story before about the going Mary, but I'll tell you, I think, I'm pretty sure I told this story. I think I did. I was on a plane. I was on a plane when I read the going Mary part and I sobbed so hard in front of a bunch of strangers, thousands of miles up in the air, and there was just nothing I could do. I couldn't stop it. I s s sobbed, snot, Tears, drools, heaving, absolutely just out of my mind, could not pull it together. It was, it was, it was on par with when I saw the movie Up. Have you guys seen the movie Up? I hate the movie Up. I hate it. The movie Up. 
the movie Up <laughs> made me cry so much. I'm not gonna sit here and say the Up was bad. I do think the Up was good. Up made me cry so hard, so hard in the movie theater and I could not pull myself together. I cried sobbing. Again, tears, snot, drool, heaving, loud, audible sobbing in the middle of the movie theater. I finally pull it together. What made me cry was the scene where you, you watch their life together and then the, the old woman dies. So I cry. And then I finally pull it together. And then there's that scene where her pictures, oh my gosh. There's that scene where her pictures start shaking on the wall. And he panics and he runs to catch the picture because the thought of it falling off the wall upsets him so much. And I cried. I broke. I had finally pulled it together and I broke from that moment. I cried literally the entire rest of the movie. I could not get myself back together, even though I was happy. Even though I was happy at the end, I cried, I cried. I cried into the parking lot, cried. Could not. No, of course I'm not crying. I held it together, I'm not crying. If I think about it too much, I will. I didn't cry. But oh man, that movie really broke me. That movie broke me and I've never watched it again. I watched it that one time in theaters and I will never, ever, ever watch it again because I can't. Marley and me, that's your fault. You knew that movie was gonna be sad, okay? Marley and me was not playing any games. If you watch Marley and me and it made you cry, that is your fault because I'm not touching that movie with a 10 foot pole. You would never, you would literally have to tie me down and pry my eyeballs open to get me to watch Marley and Me, absolutely not. If you cried in Marley and Me, that's your own fault. Why'd you even go? Why'd you even see that? <laughs> oh, I haven't watched uh, Quintessential Quintuplets. I've heard it's cute though. If it made you cry, it would probably make me cry. We're not watching Up Up watch along stream, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I really don't think that I could do that. Grave of the Fireflies. That one also got me. That one really got me. It did not get me as bad as Up, I will say. But that one did get me. <sighs> I cry every time when Boromir dies. I cry every, oh my God. Every time I get to the part in the book where Legolas um, sings the song about, about Boromir, I can't, I can't. Makes me cry, makes me cry, makes me cry. Also, even though, okay, even though, even though I know, I know that Frodo's not dead. I know Frodo's not dead. I know he's not dead. When Sam thinks that he's dead, I can't, I really can't do it. It gets me every single time. I cry, all these tears. I just can't stand, I can't stand to see my boy so upset because he really thinks, he really, oh my, mm mm. Every time. Every time. I also cry in the Hobbit movies when Feely and Keely die. <laughs> uh, the, you know, Thorin, Thorin is a maybe. I might cry or I might not. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. It just depends. I definitely don't in the book. I think they, the movies do a lot of a better job of endearing you to him. So I'm more likely to cry in the movie than I am in the books. Cause I feel like, in the books, in the book. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna, <laughs> people are gonna hate me for that. I just feel like they do a better job of en endearing you to Thorin in, in the movies uh, than in the book. In the book he's a little more callous I think. And I and I don't feel that him and Bilbo are, that, are quite that close. So when he dies, it is sad, but it doesn't wreck me. Cause I, re I really do cry sometimes. But I always cry with Feely and Keely, I don't know why. Th those, cause they seem so innocent. Oh yeah, the, the actor that got for Thor is just kill, is killing it, is absolutely killing it. It's so good. I, I think that 
I have to take the accusation that for an evil woman, I do cry a lot. It's true. I am evil. I am evil. I'm just an evil woman that cries a lot. <laughs> okay, am I getting you in the feels? I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay, I'm glad that you guys got the same feeling too. Because I feel like a lot of people really hate the Hobbit movies. And I really don't. I definitely see the flaws with them. And I know, you know, I know all the background information about all the stuff that happened with how they were getting made and the filming limits and, and things, the crunch time. I know it was very stressful. I know it could have been done a lot better. I hate that they stretched out into three movies. I do feel that that is unnecessary. But there's a lot of things I really like about the Hobbit movies. They give Bilbo some wins that he doesn't get in the book that I really like. For example, when they're up against the trolls, usually in the, usually, why do I say it so weird? In the book, it's a it's a Gandalf win, right? But they give it to Bilbo in the movie, and I feel like that really helps to kind of set up Bilbo and his friendship with the dwarfs a little bit better, in my opinion. Um, I like I like. I like the way that they did Thorin better in the movie too. There's some things that they added that I really don't hate. I know people really don't like the scene where they're escaping. Um, where are they? Mer Merkwood, right? And they're in the barrels and they're floating down the river. I know people don't like that scene. I like it. I like it. It's fun, okay? It's fun. But I do, I do think it got dragged out. There is a little too much filler in it for sure. Um, but I, but I also like that you get, oh gosh, why am I forgetting his name? I feel like a fake fan right now. But I like that you get, you get more time spent in, um, the town with, his name starts with a B, you guys know who I'm talking about, who ends up shooting down, um, Schmaug, right? So, I feel like that's really nice too. Because in the books, it's just kind of this random character, it feels like sometimes. In the books, in the book. I always lump them all together and then I feel like people are gonna call me out. Like, The Hobbit's only one book. I know. I just lump them all together so it feels like books to me, including The Lord of the Rings. Bard, yes, Bard. Sorry, the chat is so delayed. I'm so sorry for that. I'll make sure from now on. I don't know if there's like a way to set it to where it automatically always chooses low latency. As it is right now, I have to physically go in and choose low latency every time I start stream. And I usually remember because I'm not rushing, but I was rushing today. <laughs> You know, I also forgot, to, well, I didn't forget. I, I didn't put it on low latency for my debut stream. So my chat was really delayed during my debut stream. But I, I just, you know, I, I hadn't, you know, I was just nervous. I didn't want to do anything that might mess it up. And I knew that it worked on regular latency. So I just didn't do the low latency for the debut. And then I started to kind of panic because the chat was so delayed that when I asked for voting stuff, I couldn't actually see what people were voting in the chat. But then I was like, it's okay, because I'm just gonna lie about everything anyways. <laughs> They're not actually getting a say. They're not actually getting to vote. I'm in control here. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> so it ended up being okay that I couldn't actually see. I couldn't see the chat. Because <laughs> it was so delayed. <laughs> I, I like the song, the songs and poems in the books, personally. I like it a lot. It's from playing the Lego games. I've never played any of the Lego games. You'll take the three movies over the rings. Ring, rings of, Ring of Power, Rings of Power had a lot of issues. I still liked it overall, but it definitely had a lot of issues. Now I know that there's some weirdness there too with rights, because they don't technically have the rights to the Cimmerillion, so that really, uh, like that changes how much that they can do and tell, but I don't know. There were some things that they chose to do that I really did not like. That the some of the decisions that they made. <sighs> Maybe I'll go on a whole rant about that another day. I'll just say the two the two things I think off the top of my head that I hated the most. I I really hated the story with the Simmeril and the the tree and it making the Mithril. Cause like we know where all of those went in canon. Like we know where they were. I don't know. So now it just seems weird. I just didn't like that. I thought that was very unnecessary and weird. I didn't necessarily hate that they found Mithril. I just didn't understand the point of the whole. I didn't understand the point of the myth that they made up. Like, why did they do that? And 
Uh, what was the other thing that I really disliked? Gosh, now I can't remember. I had it in my head a second ago. If it comes back to me, I'll say it. But overall, I didn't totally hate Rings of Power. I thought the, the sets were really beautiful. I liked the costuming. I really liked uh, a lot of the nods that they made. Like, they did as much as they could with the, with the material that they did have access to adapt. Like, making little, like, uh, what do you call it? What, Easter eggs? Easter eggs for fans, which I thought was nice. Why not go on a rant now about Rings of Power? <laughs> we're here for your rants after all. That's true. That's true. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think I'll go on a big uh, after after we do the Lord of the Rings marathon on Saturday. I'll probably end up going on a really big rant about <laughs> Lord of the Rings because it's going to be uh, fresh on my mind. Uh, the incomplete sequel. Yes, I did read that. And like, okay, listen. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, so Tolkien did kind of play with the idea of doing a sequel. So something that would have happened after the events of the Lord of the Rings. And we actually do, we do know a lot of the stuff that happens because he did write about it in his additional writings. So like, for example, you know, like we, we just know like where certain characters ended up and stuff. But this was going to be like a proper actual story going forward. And basically from what I understand, Tolkien's uh, feelings on it were, were, he felt like it would water down the ending of the original books and make them less good for there to be an evil to like just pop up again. Think kind of like the Star Wars problem. I agree with him there, where like additional Star Wars do sort of water down when you watch the original ones, because you're like, none of this mattered. None of it worked. It all just happened again. Nothing really changed, right? So he, he felt like he didn't actually want to go through with the sequel, but he did start writing it. So you can read like uh, the first like chapter. And I understand, I totally understand where he's coming from. I get it, but... Man, when I read that first chapter, it gave me cold chills. I was so into it. I was like, holy crap, it would have been really good. I think he was right, and I do think that he made the right decision, but I, it is cool. If you've never read it, go, go ahead and take a look at it because it really did give me cold chills. I thought it was beautifully written and it sucked me in, man. Like if that was the first chapter of any book, like of any series ever, I would have been so suck sucked in. But yeah, the cycle thing, I just don't like it. I don't, I think he was actually right for that because it does get tiresome. I don't mind, like I do think there's a way to do a sequel because obviously we know that like life can't just be perfect forever. I, I would say, okay, I would say a good example, and I feel like I might get uh, trash for this, but le let me finish what I'm saying. <laughs> a good example of a sequel that had that had conflict without just bringing back the old conflict and watering down the original conclusion. A good example of that would be The Legend of Korra, right? So with The Legend of Korra, they didn't just recycle the same thing. It wasn't like, oh, Fire Nation's taking over again, blah, 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 right? It was actually a brand new source of issue uh, that made sense with the development of their world. The world building was really cool, what they did with it. I think, in my personal opinion, it felt very natural, it felt very organic, it felt very steeped in the world. <laughs> now, let me say overall, do I like Legend of Korra? No. I don't like Legend of Korra. I have insane amounts of issues with it. Overall, would I say Legend of Korra is good? No. I, I have tons of issues with it. But, I just think the way that they developed the conflict was really interesting and really well done. It didn't do anything, like, seeing the conflict in Legend of Korra doesn't make me go back and watch Avatar The Last Airbender and think everything that they did was pointless. Right? Whereas sometimes when we get sequels to series, I know I already called out once, but Star Wars, it just makes it feel like everything that just happened was pointless because the villain just came back, you know? And nothing really changed. I'll, I'll, I might, I think to do a proper rant about Korra, I would have to rewatch it and I don't know if I have it in my heart. <laughs> I don't know if I have it in my heart to rewatch Korra because I really did have a lot of hatred for that show. I think what made me the angry the most is that it really had a lot of potential. I didn't hate the first season entirely. I hated it by the end of it, 
But I didn't hate it entirely, and I didn't really, really start hating the show until the second season. I yeah, I just don't know if it's worth. Honestly, if I'm if I'm consuming Avatar content, I'm just gonna go back and watch. I'm just gonna go back and watch the. the uh, Avatar The Last Airbender again, because I really think it's perfect. <laughs> Don't wish Korra upon anyone. It just sucks, because it really could have been something. It really could have been something. I I was, I was, I was there. They had me in those first two episodes. <sighs> oh well. Yeah, the most recent trilogy of the Star Wars, I don't know. I wasn't into it. I think, I mean, sometimes series can kind of get away with it, like recycling the same plots. I mean, I'm, I'm a Dragon Ball fan, so like, what am I saying? But it's just different. Dragon Ball is not Star Wars. It's like two different things. I don't think it worked for Star Wars. So, oh well. <laughs> yes, I agree, yes, about Rise of the Skywalker. I don't know, it just... I don't know. <laughs> The pacing for Korra was bad. I agree it was bad. And I, gosh, I feel like, oh, okay. I'm not gonna go on a full rant about this, but one of my favorite, absolute favorite, favorite things about Avatar The Last Airbender is how you really go on this journey with Aang and him learning how to master all of these elements, right? And you don't even just see it with Aang. You also see it with um, Toph and you see it with Katara, especially Katara. Katara is not a master waterbender by any means. You see Katara in the background practicing her waterbending episodes and episodes and episodes and episodes and episodes, right? And then Korra comes along and it's like by the end of the first season she could just like do things. Ah, I'm an airbender now. What? And, I, and it was the very same thing with Bolin. Don't even get me started with Bolin. It was like, Bolin wanted to learn how to lava bend. And it's like, will he, won't he, will he, won't he? And then in this like big moment, just all of a sudden he can just, boom, he can water, he can lava bend now. And I'm like, that's just so, it's so the opposite of the way they did things in Avatar The Last Airbender, where their development, not only with like character development personality wise, but their development as fighters, as benders felt so organic and earned. It was so earned. And then they just like threw powers around in Korra. It was very disappointing to me. Yeah, everybody definitely had character development, but it, but it took time. And it's not like, it's not like Avatar The Air Last Airbender is that long of a series. It's really not that long. They just did a good job of, of integrating everything together. They paid attention to the details. Like, like I said, like with Katara, it's not like they had a bunch of episodes focused solely on Katara learning learning water bending. It was just that you saw her in the background practicing her water bending pretty much every single episode. So when she starts to get really, really good at bending, it feels, it doesn't feel Mary Sue to me. It doesn't feel like a cop out. It just feels like, yeah, she's gotten really good at it. I've sat here and watched her for seasons practice every day. No, with Bolin, it was lava bending. You don't, maybe you didn't get that far. There's a part where Bolin lava bends. I think, I think he's learning, um, metal, is, is he learning how to metal bend too? I can't remember. Maybe he is. But there's a part, uh, specifically where he lava bends that really, it's the lava bending that really ticks me off. Cause there's like lava like coming towards him and he has to like do it last minute and he's like never been able to do it before. I don't know, I didn't like it. <sighs> I'm not wholesome, I'm evil. I'm so evil. <laughs> I'm evil! I thought I was gonna really like Bolin. I don't know, it just didn't happen. It didn't work out. T Toph creating metal bending is so freaking cool. There there are some comics. I've read the comics, so th they're not like finished. As far as I know, if, if they've gone past what I read, then I haven't read them yet. But there are some comics that were covering the time between Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra that I really enjoyed. And they were going in, like you were learning about uh, Zuko and Azula's mom and like Azula escapes prison. But I don't think they ever finished them. But I liked that because you also saw during those comics, you saw Toph like starting her school and teaching other people how to metal bend. So you got to really see like the beginning groundwork for what we then see fully realized in the future with um, Legend of Korra. So you thought I was an angel? No, no. Check your eyes. Check your eyes. <laughs> evil, the evil woman. 
Do you guys like yellow? <laughs> I love the Electric Light Orchestra so much. <laughs> I listen to them all the time. Wait, I'm gonna age myself. But when I was really little, I had a greatest hits of yellow on a <laughs> on a tape. I had it on a tape that I would put in my boom box. And when you play it on one side, you had to flip it and then play the other side. And I used to listen, I used to listen to that all the time. Oh my goodness. I used to do interpretive dances to Mr. Blue Sky. <laughs> and my poor family, my poor family would humor me. I remember them sitting there and being like, yes, honey, oh, you look so good. While I'm, uh, while I'm doing interpretive dancing <laughs> to Mr. Blue Sky. <laughs> Oh, that's true. I guess I can't age myself because I already told you guys I'm 95. You guys know. Yes, on the cassette tape. <laughs> I don't care if it's boomer taste. ELO is just good. ELO is so good. Don't worry, I dust myself. I wake up and I dust myself every day. <laughs> oh, Mr. Blue Sky is so good. It's so good. I like the part where they're like... Ha, 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 ha. You know what I'm talking about? Running down the app. You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, it's so good. I don't know what my favorite ELO song is, though. I really like uh, Turning to Stone. Do you know that one? Uh, it, it, it goes really fast. Oh, but, oh my gosh, no, I like Telephone. I think, is that what it's called? Telephone? It's, it's the one that's like, Hello, how are you? Have you been all right? All this lonely, 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 that's, that's what I'd say I'd tell you everything if you pick up that telephone Oh my gosh, I love that song, it's so good Thank you, thank you for the dono, ELO, and here I thought I couldn't like you more Oh, you're an ELO fan, yay! I'm glad I see ELO fans in the chat, I don't meet a lot of people in my in my real, in my regular day to day, that that like ELO. <laughs> telephone line, that's what it's called. Telephone line, give me a sign. Oh, it's so good. I really like that one. I'm living in twilight. Oh, oh, telephone line. It's so good. There is no way they're gonna approve an ELO cover. <laughs> There's no way. I had to finesse my way into the Little Match Girl cover. <laughs> I had to finesse my way by basically being like, Hey Twitter, shouldn't I cover this song? <laughs> There's no way they would approve that. <laughs> it's gotta be uh, trendy, tr trendy and new. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could cover a Steely Dan song too, that'd be fun. But, to, though the Steely Dan songs are out of my range for the most part. Yeah, low songs are actually in my range for the most part. Ask forgiveness, not permission. I mean, honestly, if I fund it myself, I can pretty much do what I want, I think. When, when I get to the point where I can start funding my own stuff, then I will. I'll just do what I want, right? I think that's how it works. Never say never. Okay, we could do, we could totally do an unarchived ELO karaoke. Man, there's so many karaoke's I want to do now. We got to do Britney, we got to do, uh, okay, Rooney Ruins ELO. Rooney Ruins, um, System of a Down. Rooney Ruins Britney Spears. Rooney Ruins Steely Dan. We're just, we're, we're adding. <laughs> I, I was thinking I would do karaoke, um, every other month. But I have so many karaoke streams I want to do now. Maybe I'll do it once a month. I'll think about it. Once a month or every other month for karaoke. So actually, that was another thing that I did on my drive down. I decided to, uh, you know, multitask. You guys know me, I like to multitask. So I was putting together my Rooney Ruins Valentine's Day playlist. Get excited, cause I, if you liked how I ruined Christmas, I'm ruining Valentine's Day. Very excited. So I was putting together songs for that, uh, a little playlist so I can practice. 
<laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I would love to do Rooney Ruins Elton John. Love Elton John. I actually got to see Elton John in concert. Amazing show. Amazing show. Also, we can do Rooney Ruins Billy Joel. Uh, I also love Billy Joel. Billy Joel, one of the most amazing concerts I've ever seen. So freaking good. Uh, oh my, so when I saw Elton John, he didn't sing Crocodile Rock, which is one of my favorite songs, and I was so sad. And then he came out and did an encore, and guess what he sang in his encore? Crocodile Rock. I was so excited. I could have cried. It made me so happy to get your favorite song in the encore. It's such a tease. Like, I really thought I wasn't going to get to hear it. <laughs> I was also really excited when I saw um, uh, Billy Joel. I really liked the song Zanzibar. And I thought for sure there was no way he was going to sing Zanzibar. There was no way he was going to sing Zanzibar. And then he did. <gasps> I was so excited. Chicago? Don't even get me started. I love Chicago. Actually, I was... Mm, I was just thinking about Chicago today. Oh, I really like the song, um, No Tell Lover. Do you know what I'm talking about? She's my no tell lover. Oh, wait, I sang that too. Every night in a different place, I meet you tender lady. She's my no tell lover. Ooh. Everyone keeps telling me that just a friend I'm meant to be. Even though I need you, darling. Hey. I love that song. I also love uh, Take Me Back to Chicago and Lay My Soul to Rest. Oh my gosh, Chicago. Mwah, 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 mwah. Love, 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 love. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm glad, okay, I'm glad you guys like Zanzibar and Billy Joel. Okay, I'm a huge Billy Joel fan. Zanzibar is just so fun. It just has, it has this little attitude. I love songs with attitude, it's so good. Yeah, Chicago has so many hits, man. They've got a lot of ballads. I, I'm not very good at singing ballads, but I think that they have enough songs that I could sing. I could, I could make a Rooney Ruin. Rooney ruins Chicago. <laughs> People are gonna think I'm talking about the city. They're gonna be like, "What do you mean, Ro Rooney? Rooney? Rooney in Chicago? Rooney went to Chicago. She's ruining it. Maybe. Just maybe I will. Oh." Got to see Queen live in the 80s. That's so cool. That's so cool. Now, I'm not like the biggest, biggest Queen fan. But of course I know. I know the classics. You know, I've never gotten super into Genesis either. <laughs> You're going monkey at full neuron activation. <laughs> you guys got me really... Now I'm, I, I started talking about music I liked and now I'm sweaty. I hope you guys like my boomer taste. Actually, I had to have my mom help me out. Um, my mom was helping me out with my Ro Rooney Ruins Valentines because I was putting a bunch of songs on there and she's like, girl, you need newer songs. So she turned me on to this uh, Olivia Rodrigo song. I had heard of Olivia Rodrigo, but I hadn't listened to any of her music. But I think I'm gonna sing an Olivia Rodrigo song. <laughs> If I sing any modern songs, it's my mom. My mom came through for me. <laughs> I think it's gonna be really fun. I'm, I'm trying to plan some things and put it together, so. Uh, I'm really excited. Pl planning the Christmas karaoke was super fun. I had, I had way too much fun doing that. And I didn't actually even have like a crazy amount of time to do it. That's why I want to plan the, I'm already planning the Valentine's Day one. Because, I mean, that's the thing about the karaoke is if I do them once a month, I can't go too crazy with all the stuff that I do in them because, you know, it's a lot of prep work. If I do them every other month, I could make them all like a la my Christmas one, you know, with like fun, fun stuff. But I guess I could also do like easy karaoke every other month where I just, you know, just stand here and sing songs. <laughs> and then I can do event karaoke every other month where it's more of an event like for Valentine's or Christmas. So I saw someone mention One Piece. I actually was thinking about doing for one of the event ones. I'm kind of like planning if I did it every other month, then I could do it in August. And if I did it in August, I could do One Piece and I could do it for Buggy's birthday. Cause Buggy's birthday is August 8th. So I could do karaoke, One Piece karaoke on Buggy's birthday. One of the most important days of the year, obviously. 
<laughs> yes, maybe I'll do casual karaoke every other month, and then in between those months, I'll do event karaoke. That sounds good. But they'll probably mostly be unarchived from here on out, because... <laughs> it's hard to pick music that's not gonna be copyrighted. <laughs> Especially when you have boomer music taste. It's easier when you're singing a lot of, uh... Japanese songs, because <laughs> I feel like they're a lot less strict about copywriting, but I, I don't know though, even then, even then a lot of them will still copyright, so they'll probably be unarchived from here on out, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. They'll still be fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it just is what it is. <laughs> but yeah. All right, I think, I think uh, I'm gonna be wrapping up stream here. But I do have a very special announcement. I have a special announcement. I literally, I literally cannot believe. I cannot believe that you guys did not guess this. I feel like personally, it was a little bit obvious. You guys are never gonna get this announcement. Just don't even try. Don't even try. <laughs> Surprise announcement. <laughs> Why does this look weird? Is this gonna work? Why does this look weird to me right now? Okay, okay, I think this is gonna work, okay. Da 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 da! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! It smacked me in the face! It smacked me in the face! <laughs> Ta-da! Do you guys see something new? Yay! I'm monetized! I'm monetized now! So we have an update. We have an update to our New Year's celebration. Our New Year's celebration is now no longer just Would You Rather in a Champagne Tower. It is now also a monetization celebration! <gasps> you never would have guessed. I know, you guys are so shocked. The shock on your faces right now. This is, this is what chat looks like right now. That's what you look like. <laughs> Yay, I'm actually really excited. I think it's gonna be fun. I thought it was nice that it came this week. That way I can just add it to an event stream that I'm already doing. I am so freaking excited for New Year's. I think it's gonna be really fun. You're, you're downright sl slack jawed. None of you guessed, none of you, you're discombobulated. I got your expression exactly. You're definitely surprised, surprise, chat face. You never saw it coming. You're perplexed. It's the Pikachu face. It's crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> I think it's going to be fun. I think it's really going to be fun. I'm trying to come up with some really fun because the would you rather, this is for you chat. Don't think you're going to be asking me would you rathers. You're not asking me. You don't get to quiz me this New Year's. I get to quiz you, chat, and then I get to judge you. <laughs> and then I get to judge you for your answers. So I'm coming up with some really fun would you rathers to ask you guys. And of course there's gonna be champ champagne. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll do other fun things. Like I'll show you guys uh, the emotes. My emo, because you haven't seen my emotes yet. So, and, and other fun things, so. Yep, absolutely nobody got it. Nobody got it, wow. But now you know, so you can spread the good word. So I'll be posting on Twitter my updated, my updated schedule. <laughs> I don't judge you guys, I would never do that. Judging you guys does not sound like something that I would do. <laughs> Champagne. <laughs> Champagne. Can you spell? Chat, can you spell champagne? <laughs> you knew this announcement since the beginning? It was obvious? Whoa, I think we have a site. We have another Esper in the chat, you guys. We have another Esper. Can you believe this? Not only am I psychic, but there's another psychic. There's, there's only room for one psychic around here, buddy. There can only be one. There can only be one psychic. Wow, you guys are really good at spelling champagne. <laughs> Champoggers. 
<laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Champ Pag Nay. <laughs> Is my design hard to draw? You think my outfit's hard to draw? You can simplify it, simplify it if you want. Listen, if you don't want to draw the tights, I don't wear them most of the time anyways. I don't wear them most of the time, so you don't have to draw those. <laughs> Literally no one could have seen it coming unless you were psychic. That's the only explanation. The only explanation is that this now became a Western and this stream is not big enough for the two of us. <laughs> we got a quick draw Esper duel. <laughs> oh man, that makes me think of Mob Psycho. And now I can't remember if I put Mob Psycho on my anime ranking. I really hope I put Mob Psycho on there. If I didn't, I'm insane. The tides stay on. No tides on subbing. Wait, no, no, don't unsub. Don't unsub, wait, I think I have them on. I actually don't know if I have them on right now. Hold on. No! Hold on. I have them on now. Don't unsub. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. <laughs> I put them on just for you. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I was there. Because Mob Psycho needs to be there. You guys didn't see anything. I had my tights on from the very beginning. I was not missing them even for a second. <laughs> they were off. They weren't. <laughs> they were. They weren't. I had them on. <laughs> Harlot. Harlot. Hoochie. Hoochie mama. Hoochie mama. Me. Oh man. Not not the not the harlot, not the Hoochie Mama accusations. <laughs> I would never lie, it's true. Alright, alright, alright. Okay, we're gonna wrap up stream. Thank you guys for sticking with me. I know I was late today. I really am gonna try to not be late too often to streams, but it was a little, a little bit of special circumstances. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Rooney Roos Day! The second Rooney Roos Day ever! I had a lot of fun. This was actually really nice. I was really looking forward to getting to talk to you guys. It was like everything, every time something happened that was funny <laughs> while I was away, I was like, oh, I have to remember to tell. I have to remember to tell everybody about this. <laughs> I should have written things down because I'm sure there's things I forgot, but maybe I'll remember them later on and I can tell you guys. But I just kept thinking, like when the Hoochie Mama thing happened, I was like, oh, I have to tell them. I have to tell the Runatics. This is too funny. So thank you guys for winding down with me. I'm going to uh, unpack my luggage and relax for the rest of the night, but... I had fun and I will see you tomorrow, I think. Yeah, no, I won't. I won't see you tomorrow. I'm lying. I will not see you. Where am I? When do I see you again? I will see you Thursday. <laughs> I'll see you Thursday at 7 for the exit 8. <laughs> not me lying in the last few seconds of my stream. <laughs> thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope to see you on Thursday. All right. Farewell. <laughs> Farewell, you runatics. <laughs> Give glory to the runes for my love and affection is forever with you. Bye-bye.